Chapter 1 Possessed the weakest you are listening at novelfull.audio Possessed the weakest dawn Roaring thunder The sound of rain clashing against the pavement echoed. I settled down while being curled up in the open draped curtain. Raindrops slid down the translucent veil, seeming to become one with the window as they froze. I kept staring at the scene endlessly. Ah! Three days. It was already the third day. No matter how much thought I tried to put into it, I have somehow transmigrated into the game. Magical Night of M. Raken, a game which I had been playing for the past seven years. Even worse, it was as a third. Rate extra who had nothing to do with either the hero or any of the other main characters. It truly was an obvious cliche. I don't even know whether or not I'm in a stable period right now. It was all too vague. Being suddenly dropped back to the start of my student life, when I saw the piles of books stacked taller than my own height, I felt a sense of dread and hopelessness. Perhaps this was a punishment. I had wanted to re-experience the story after ignoring it for a long time. Not wanting to bother with grinding, I went ahead and tried to leisurely start a new game after applying the stat 100 cheat code, the only one that works in the game. Being a hard.core veteran, I definitely shouldn't have done that. That's probably why I transmigrated. Huh, that would be crazy. I'm really starting to think of all sorts of things. However, it was an undeniable fact that I have transmigrated into .magic knight of M. Raken. After living in this world for the past three days, I was able to confirm that this was the M. Raken Academy that I had seen in the game. And that today is the day of the entrance ceremony, the event that marked the beginning of the game for the player. I found out the time and place for the ceremony thanks to the date being posted on the entrance ceremony banner and the dormitory calendar, both of which have been mostly hidden behind the main gate. When I first opened my eyes in the student dormitory, I used the academy's own currency, which I received as a freshman benefit, to pay for my meals. Other than that, I did nothing but wander around in silence day after day. With how realistic it all felt, I had no choice but to accept this absurd reality. In addition, I had gained the ability to use magic by manipulating mana with my senses. This, ice curtain, I'm using as an umbrella was proof of that. Well, it's not exactly a funny situation I've found myself in. As I was lost in my own thoughts while absentmindedly listening to the sound of rain, I suddenly realized something terrible. This is, it's hell.level difficulty, isn't it? Magic Knight of M. Raken begins with a selection of three different difficulty levels. Easy, normal, and hard. You can choose the extreme difficulty after beating the game once, and the infamous hell difficulty after beating the game a second time. The game's atmosphere in hell difficulty changes dramatically from the start. Today was supposed to be a clear and sunny day from start to finish, as usual. It was a good day to mark the beginning of the main character, Ian Fairy Tales, chaotic life at the Academy. The refreshing music playing in the background and bright atmosphere of that time were still etched in my memory to this day. However, if you were to select Hell difficulty instead, the game begins with heavy downpour and gloomy weather. I still remember just how gloomy the beginning of the Hell difficulty was, with the opening cutscenes being void of any kind of background music and only the sound of rain remaining. It was almost as if it was foreshadowing the difficult road ahead. And it was in this difficulty that Ian is forced to fight an enemy before the entrance ceremony even began. Even though I got transmigrated, Hell difficulty, as its name would suggest, boasted an insane difficulty level. It was natural for the enemy's level to randomly increase or for their pattern to become more complex, and with the story itself being changed as well, enemies that had never appeared in any of the previous difficulty settings make an appearance every now and then. It was a challenge that only the most hardcore of veterans could overcome. But I, when I tried to check the status window, a translucent window suddenly materialized in front of me. It was an interface that I had seen often in fantasy games. Status, Name Isaac L.V. Gender Male Year First Title 
Freshman Mana 280-300 Mana Recovery Speed, D Stamina, D Strength, D Intelligence, D Willpower, B Potential. Details Combat Skills, Elemental Series 1 Ice, Elemental Firepower, D Elemental Efficiency, D Elemental Synergy, C Elemental Series 2, Locked, Own Skills, Active, 1, Ice Generation, D, 2, Ice Curtain, C, 1, Cold Divergence, C, 1, Basic Protection Magic, E, Passive, None Skill Tree. Details. Unique Attributes, None Even for a Third. Rate Extra, These Were Disastrous Stats. First and Foremost, My Level Was at a Measly 20. The Average Level of Freshmen, from what I can recall, was around 40 at this time. Other than a few exceptions, the present students should all be in this category. In this game, level 20 was the level that you would get during the Hell.Difficulty version of the tutorial. However, it was too low. Even if my willpower stat is high, it will only end up increasing my resistance to illusion.type magic. It's not a stat that would be of much help in combat. What kind of life did this guy lead to not even be at the basic level? The same goes for my skills. Considering that the worst grade is E, it's easy to guess just how garbage the level of my elemental firepower, D. Grade is, which is directly responsible for the power of my skills. Just how did a trivial character such as this manage to make it into somewhere as prestigious as the M. Rakan Academy? If I were to think back to how difficult the contents of this game were, it was an obvious conclusion to make that I had passed the overwhelming entrance exam with my theoretical skills, rather than my practical skills. If that was the case, then what was I supposed to do now? No matter how hard I tried to recall this body's memories, my head remained blank. Rather than the past, I now had to worry about my plans for the future. I still didn't know if I would ever be able to return to my own world later on, or if I would have to live here for the rest of my life. The worst case scenario was if the world had a bad ending as a result of the death of the main character, Ian Fairytale, and I died along with everyone else. So, under the assumption that I can't return to my own world, what would be the safest countermeasure to take? Of course, it would be to clear this game. It's lucky that the cheat is still valid. After thoroughly checking the status window for the past three days, I was able to confirm that the stat 100 cheat had been applied to me as is. While it has no direct effect on my stats, it can be used to invest in my potential growth. Therefore, it was difficult to expect dramatic effects right away. The main problem is that this Isaac character not only had terrible specs but awful growth potential as well. Ice Generation dot. The ball of ice that had just been created mid-air with my mana was only the size of a soccer ball. It was the result created by squeezing out every ounce of mana I have in order to make a single block of ice. Ice generation, ice element, 1, once I finally released the mana holding the ice.sphere in place, the physics.defying mass could no longer resist the force of gravity and immediately fell to the ground. Really, really weak. Why didn't I create the ice using the liquids inside of another person's body in combat, you ask? Sadly enough, it was simply not possible. This game had a setting where it was impossible to generate any form of magic within another person's body because of an inherent mana force field that all living beings have. To put it simply, my only power was the ability to drop ice cubes. Knowing that, I now needed to make sure with my own two eyes before doing anything. Is the main character, Ian Fairytale, capable enough to get through this hellish difficulty appropriately on his own Magic Knight of M. Raken? Had a new boss fight at the start of the game exclusive to the Hell difficulty, Trevion the Evil. He is supposed to meet the main character today, just before the entrance ceremony begins. In the future, the main character, Ian Fairytale, will end up facing countless enemies. It was a result of the special powers that Ian holds. The rain has stopped. The time has come. I took a glance over at the clock tower placed in the center of the academy. 
Right now, the time is 8 o'clock a.m. The sunlight was finally pouring through the cracks of the gradually receding dark clouds. I immediately began heading into the Josina Forest, that was located just outside the Academy's main gate, while reliving my past memories of playing the game to find my way. After climbing up the hill, I would be able to find a small dormitory where the main character, Ian Fairytale, had stayed for a period of time while traveling to the M. Rakan Academy. Ian is supposed to leave the dormitory today, finally making his way towards the academy. My destination was a glade that would appear midway through a forest trail lined with trees. It was the place where Ian was supposed to be while on his way to the academy. It's here. I stopped in my tracks the moment I reached my destination. A black. Haired man could be seen leaning against a tree, his head facing downwards. He was dressed similarly to me, and a stream of blood leaked down his chin. Seeing his o dot so dot familiar face, I was immediately able to recognize who he was. Ian Fairytale. He was the main protagonist of Dot Magic Knight of M. Raken. Ian Fairytale, L.V. Race. Human elements. Light danger. An information window suddenly materialized and identified the black dot haired man before me as Ian Fairytale, confirming my suspicions. After having completed the tutorial in Hell. Difficulty, your level will be automatically set to 30. The main character, who had been knocked out over there, seemed to have already finished the tutorial. And standing before the fainted protagonist was a dark dot skinned man. The limbs of the dark dot skinned man were eerily limp. His hands, both of which appeared nearly bent in their opposite directions, were twisted. Pure white, curly hair. The infamous first boss that had driven countless players into the depths of despair right from the start of the Hell difficulty. Trevion the Evil, LV. Race. Demon Elements. Darkness, Water Danger. Hi it was, Trevion the Evil. Level 80. It's Hell difficulty for sure. Appearing right after starting the game, is the enemy who can see into the future, Trevion the Evil. He was level 80 on Hell difficulty. On the other hand, Ian's level was a pitiful 30. In his current state, if Ian were to get a direct hit from just one light attack from Trevion, he'll immediately fall into a moribund state like right now, and if he were to get hit by a second attack, he'll die instantly. As a result of the Hell difficulty, the enemy level was extremely high. Even after defeating it, the amount of experience gained wasn't much more than the other difficulties. The development team's gloomy intention for players to not even consider beginning the Hell difficulty without already having a high level of control seemed excessive. It doesn't make sense when coming from a plot standpoint for the current Ian to be able to defeat Trevion. Eventually, in the middle of the fight, Kaya Astrian, that a second seat of the freshman class magic department, would make an appearance and subdue the enemy herself. So in the end, the goal in this fight was to keep holding on. By the way, Ian, just what are you doing at a time like this? Did you run out of stamina right away? It can't be. Please no. Of course, the hell difficulty requires an amount of control only attainable after training until you feel like dying from the very beginning, but even so, this is not. Trevion slowly began to approach the currently knocked dot out Ian. Black orbs of water floated in the palm of each of his hands. It was a type of magic that combined the two elements of darkness and water. And so, from the first day of the entrance ceremony, this world was already on the verge of a bad ending. What would happen to me if I were to die here? What will happen to me when there is a bad ending? Would I be sent back to reality, or... Do I die permanently? Ominous. I had no idea what to do to salvage this situation. The only thing most likely to guarantee my safety is to clear this game. At the end of the story, it is said that Ian became a magic knight and went on to win countless wars. Furthermore, as M. Raken Academy is the most prestigious academy on the continent, you could easily live in this world with just one of their diplomas. However, in order to do that, you must first defeat the final boss, Nephid the Evil God. 
Naturally, this game couldn't be completed without the help of that unconscious bastard with the so dot called title of the main character. Let's hurry up and try to think of a solution. Now, the best way to solve this crisis is. Oh, the cheat. The 100 stat bonus cheat. I quickly opened the status window and clicked on the potential dot details. Section. Potential, stat points. 100. Growth rate, physical training efficiency, D+. 16 out of 100, up, magic training efficiency, D. 10 out of 100, up, learning efficiency, D. 12 out of 100, up. Elemental resistance, fire resistance, E. 0 out of 100, up, water resistance, D. 6 out of 100, up, ice resistance, C. 24 100, up, lightning resistance, C. 29 out of 100, up, rock resistance, E. 2 out of 100, up, wind resistance, D. 13 out of 100, up, neutral magic resistance, D. 8 out of 100, up. Versus race combat power, versus human combat power, E. 4 out of 100, up, versus. Other races combat power, E. 1 out of 100, up, versus heavenly beings combat power, E. 0 out of 100, up, versus demon combat power, E. 0 out of 100, up, the 100 stat bonus cheat I had entered a while back was successfully applied without any problems. The up button was active for each potential because there were stat points available. The potential that already had points allocated by default seemed to be innate to Isaac himself. Anyway, ignoring everything else, I immediately poured all of my stat points into, versus demon combat power. Trink. Potential, versus demon combat power, has been improved from E.class to S.class. You have acquired the unique trait, Hunter. Dot. Versus demon combat power highest level. This gave you the unique trait, Hunter. It was only natural to put everything into this particular potential in this situation. That's because of its effect of temporarily increasing stats when dealing with demons. As a matter of fact, nearly all of the official villains in Dot Magic Knight of M. Raken are demons. Therefore, the more you invest in versus demon combat power, the more specialized you become in boss battles. And, Hunter, is a unique trait that is only obtainable after fully maxing out, versus demon combat power. It is a trait that vastly enhances the effectiveness of, versus demon combat power. As a result, I will be able to exert overwhelming strength when fighting against demons like Trevion from now on. Finally prepared, I headed into the open space. Then, as Trevion approached Ian, he finally noticed my presence and directed his gaze toward me. Dark purple eyes. A human-esque face. An elongated body that looked as if it had been stretched out. The moment he spotted me, he grinned wide enough to tear apart the corners of his lips. Frankly speaking, it was a bizarre appearance. AI made, hello. Trevion's head twitched as he greeted me with a squeaky voice. It was because of this particular trait that many players had given him a nickname. It was, Hello.Man. Trevion was a demon that can only say, Hello. Hello 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 hello. He swayed back and forth and suddenly approached me with frightening speed. Without any time to hesitate, I stretched out my right hand towards Trevion. It was a traditional stance for using magic. What kind of effect will it have? Fear and anticipation intertwined as they swirled within me. Then, suddenly, my heart started beating strongly, as if it was gripped by a vice. My blood boiled, and the surrounding flow of mana grew intense. The demon has been recognized as an enemy. The unique trait, Hunter, is activated. The level and stats are temporarily greatly enhanced. The skill tree temporarily becomes plus 10. Status, 
Name. Isaac L.V. 120, Gender. Male Year. First Title. Freshman Mana. 30,000, forward slash, 30,000, Mana Recovery Speed, B+, plus, Stamina, A. Strength, A, Intelligence, D, Willpower, S, O, Levels and Abilities, Rose Sharply. Unlike before, it felt as if I had an unlimited amount of energy at my disposal. I willfully surrendered myself to that feeling. Trevion swung his arms, causing a strange mana mixed with darkness and water to begin spiraling in my direction. At that moment, I released the cold air that had been flowing throughout my body with my right hand. A geometric pattern composed of a bright blue light manifested itself in front of my outstretched right hand then, the cold magic exploded. Frost explosion, ice element, 5, bang. Whoa! As if exploding from a cannon, a ball of ice burst straight out of my hand and proceeded to devour Trevion's magic. The vast mana made up of ice spread outwards in a motion akin to a fan all at once and overwhelmed the glade in an instant. It easily swallowed up Trevion and then soared diagonally towards the sky as if it were bouncing off the ground. A huge block of ice formed in no time, looking like an incredibly magnificent sculpture. With the cold air blowing around it, that block of ice gave the illusion of having been transported to the North or South Pole. Trevion stood trapped in the block of ice with a painful expression as if he had been frozen in time. Fortunately, the main character, Ian Fairytale, was barely outside the range of the ice block, so he had ended up suffering no damage from my attack. It was probably because the ice ball had flown into the sky before it reached him. I heaved a deep sigh of relief, my breath visible in the cold air. From the palm of my right hand, where the magic had come from just now, pure white cold air was flowing out, similar to smoke leaking from a pistol's muzzle after firing a bullet. Just a few moments ago, I was only able to make a block of ice the size of a soccer ball. On the other hand, the iceberg that had formed before my very eyes, with various thorns poking out in every direction, was on a different level entirely. So this was the result of upgrading, versus demon combat power, to its maximum level. I vaguely sensed that it was possible to get rid of my magic's aftermath by releasing the mana holding it together. As if I had simply pressed a button on a remote control, I naturally released the mana flowing through the massive ice block. As one would expect, the sharp and huge chunk of ice began cracking apart. Crack. It broke down with an explosion of ice, suddenly turned into a light blue dot-colored powder, and then started to be blown away by the breeze. I guess you could say it was freezing off. No longer frozen in ice, Trevion collapsed while covered in blood. His wounds were formed from the countless ice shards aggressively flung at him when the skill, frost explosion, had occurred. Is it fine? It wouldn't be an issue even if I had to fight any further. I thought I could win with ease. After a period of intense silence, Trevion collapsed on the ground while still uttering the word. Hello. Hell, a powerless voice scattered in the wind. As Trevion turned into ashen dust and faded away. Footnotes. Chapter 2. Mana Evaluation, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Mana Evaluation, 1, Congratulations. You've defeated the demon, Trevion the Evil, LV80, and gained EXP. Level up. Your level has increased to 25. You have unlocked the achievement. Beginning of a legend. You have gained an additional 15 bonus stat points. Oh. A sudden increase of 5 levels all at once. Also, along with every level up, each of my stats were increased by 2. The rewards for achievements appear to have been awarded as it normally would. By the way, the overly dot high level of the enemy just now was because of this scenario being on the hell dot level difficulty setting. In other words, even if the level difference between us was extreme, a wild explosion in levels would not occur. Status, Name Isaac LV Gender Male Year First Title Freshman Mana 
305-320 mana recovery speed, D. Stamina, D. Strength, D. Intelligence, D. Willpower, B. Looks like my mana has increased by 20. Meanwhile, all of my other stats are the same as before. A unique characteristic of Dot Magic Knight of M. Ken was that, unlike most fantasy games, the player's level dot up didn't have any kind of direct effect to their stats. Sure, the higher the level, the higher the limit of the character's stats were, but it was not a mechanic for me to concern myself with. In the end, you needed to start training desperately if you wanted to actually raise your stats. The stat points that were accumulated from a level up can be invested in a character's growth efficiency, so as the game progressed, the stat level began to curve upward. Therefore, it could be said that Isaac's stats would start to see a sudden rise. Putting that aside, another game mechanic was that the higher the opponent's level was, the less damage it would end up taking. However, seeing as Trevion was only level 80 while I was level 120 at the time, the damage I had given him seemed to have been fully applied. Oh, does it also give party experience? I glanced at Ian, who was still knocked out on the ground. Ian Fairytale, LV. Race. Human elements. Light danger. A sudden increase of one level. In Dot Magic Knight of M. Raken, allies who fought together in battle received experience points according to their performance. If the character was a damage dealer, it would be based on how much damage they dealt, if the character was a healer, it would be based on how much health they restored, and so on. Additionally, the more characters in a party, the higher the total amount of experience would be. Therefore, it wasn't the type of system where the experience points were split between party members. It looks like the party experience system was the same as before, even after the unpredictable event where I had gotten myself transmigrated into this game. The first bad ending has been prevented, and now I should hurry up and head to the entrance ceremony. The fact that I was still stuck in this world after three days no longer fazed me. It was a necessity for me to properly face all of the events that are going to happen in the future and to sort out each of them myself. Oh, right. Kaya. Come to think of it, Kaya Astrian hadn't shown up yet. Plot.wise, Kaya Astrian was supposed to appear while Ian was in the middle of holding out against Trevion. I tried looking around but couldn't sense or see her anywhere. However, when I thought about it more, it made sense. In the game, Kaya had only appeared after Ian held on for a while. But I had already killed Trevion in an instant. In other words, Kaya must not have arrived here just yet. I'm glad. I felt relieved that I didn't get caught in the middle of the fight. Had Kaya, the second seed of the entire freshman class, seen me obliterate a level 80 demon in one attack I couldn't even imagine how things would have turned out. If I were to continue living within this world, I would have to prevent any possible bad endings in the future. I shouldn't have such a setback in my plans this early on as a result of accidentally revealing my true abilities. First of all, I had ended up making a lot of noise when casting, Frost Explosion, so it would be better to quickly get away from the scene before I get noticed. After sorting out my thoughts, I began walking back towards the academy for the entrance ceremony. Dot 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 wait, what? Kaya Astrian who was currently hiding behind a tree, couldn't keep her mouth shut from shock. While wandering around Josina Forest, she had suddenly sensed a dense source of mana and quickly flew over with her wind magic. Once she arrived, she saw that there was a confrontation between a strange dot-looking demon and a single man. To begin with, the random appearance of demons is normally considered to be a natural disaster. There was nothing all that strange about the sudden appearance of demons in a remote place like this. Feeling the amount of mana he was emitting, it was clear that he was quite a dangerous demon. But in that case, just what the hell was that man who had slaughtered such a demon in an instant? His appearance was that of a young male student with silver dot blue hair and a pair of crimson eyes which had a bluish aura attached. His height seemed to be about average, and the overall impression he gave was cute. However, the moment he fought, his eyes turned cold. 
It was a dramatic shift in his atmosphere, akin to flipping one's palm. It looked as if the air surrounding him became freezing cold. Sure enough, it was quite an impressive attack. Frost explosion, a five-dot star ice spell. With that much power, it was clear that his skill level was extremely high as well. Rather than feeling jealous, his skill was at a level worthy of admiration. Furthermore, at the moment when that man cast, Frost Explosion, Kaya had sensed from him an amount of mana far greater than her own. The amount of her mana was something that Kaya was particularly confident in. She was so talented in that regard that she was admitted to the magic department of the prestigious M. Rakan Academy as the second seat in her class. But that guy, who the hell is he? Looking at his uniform, it looks like he's a freshman like me. He was clearly wearing the academy uniform. A silver dot rimmed navy blue cape was neatly draped over his shoulders, and the small brooch attached to his tie was scattering the red light that symbolized the first grade. At a glance, you could tell that he was a freshman like herself. Could he be the top seat? Dot? Seeing the clear difference between them, Kaya suddenly realized that she was a frog in a well. The days when the people around her praised her while saying that she was a genius born with magical talents flashed through her mind. A strong skepticism regarding those claims now engulfed her. Breathe. She let out a gasp when she saw that the silver dot haired man began to move. Kaya Estrian quickly turned around and crept behind a tree. Her light green hair, tied to both sides into a twin dot tail, fluttered for a moment. She had been holding her breath. Kaya found the man's strength to be terrifying. The silver dot haired man, on the other hand, leisurely left the glade, as if he had never noticed her in the first place. Dot 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 the entrance ceremony in reality was similar to the one in the game. It took place in the middle of a sunny day after the heavy rain had finally cleared up, while having the students gather up in an outdoor plaza. I took a seat among the other students on an ordinary chair. Thanks to the faculty preparing the venue and installing a light barrier in advance, the plaza was left untouched by the morning rain. Standing behind the podium was Lou Seltania, the top seat holder of the magic department's freshman class, and Kaya Astrian, the second seat beside her, who were currently in the middle of receiving their awards together. For some odd reason, Kaya was looking back and forth between the second seat and the students sitting in the audience, wearing a suspicious expression on her face. Was she still in shock from being in the second seat rather than the first? It was impossible to tell if that was originally the case, because the faces of the first and the second seat were hidden in this cut scene, but I never knew they could have that kind of expression. It felt fresh, in a way. Fortunately enough, the main character, Ian Fairytale, was able to arrive at the entrance ceremony on time. Seeing how his physical condition was intact, it was clear that Kaya Astrian had quickly healed him with healing magic after I left the scene. Thanks to his unique constitution, Ian could be healed to peak condition just by casting a little bit of healing magic on him. Then, after casually talking about this and that with his savior, he would suddenly exclaim that he needs to get to the entrance ceremony as soon as possible. By the way, I can't believe that the main character is having this much trouble from the get.go. An ominous feeling slowly crept down my spine. Although the main story hadn't even started yet, Ian Fairytale had already gotten his ass beat by Trevion the Evil. In other words, it's impossible to know whether he would be capable enough to beat any of the numerous enemies that will appear in the future. With my soul having been transmigrated into this world, I have no idea what kind of disastrous fate would befall me if Ian Fairytale were to die and cause a bad ending to occur. With all of this in mind, the most certain way for me to avoid an untimely death is to go ahead and clear the main story of Dot Magic Knight of M. Raken, while struggling through this hellish difficulty level to prevent a bad ending. It's a bit of a complicated feeling, though alongside a feeling of anticipation, the fear of the unknown crept up as well. The feeling I had right now was similar to what I felt back when I had bought up all of the stocks of a certain electronic company, in the hopes that the stock price would end up rising to 100,000, all while the price chart gradually continued to drop. 
It was the kind of feeling that made me feel both anticipation and anxiety at the same time, the kind that made me feel unable to move on as I told myself things like, it will rise again someday. Dot 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 the orientation for freshmen was scheduled to take place directly after the entrance ceremony. After checking the bulletin board inside the building's entrance and finding my name, Isaac, listed underneath the provisional third class, I began heading over to the lecture hall for the provisional third class. After playing through this game a countless number of times, I had already become more than familiar with the layout of this vast and sprawling M. Rakan Academy. Thanks to that, I was able to find the lecture hall designated for the provisional third class without any issues. It was a terraced lecture hall reminiscent of what you would find in a university. Looking around, there were about 50 students who had already taken their seats. Even then, around 10 more seats will be filled in the future as well. The magic department in this academy had a maximum capacity of 300 students per grade, with a total of 5 provisional classes each. I roughly pushed my way through the crowd and sat down in one of the seats in the center. Ian Fairytale, the main character, still hadn't arrived just yet, but even then there were a couple of familiar faces I could spot. Matteo Giordana, LV. Race. Human Elements. Rock Danger. Matteo Giordana, who would end up playing the role of an early villain in the story, acting as a stepping stone for Ian Fairytale's development. His brown bangs were greased back, revealing his clenched forehead, which he paired with his muscular physique to make for an intimidating figure. Tristan Humphrey, L.V. Race. Human Elements. Wind Danger. Then there was Tristan Humphrey, a vain aristocrat who had a hobby of looking down on those he considered weak as well as the commoners he saw as inferior. He was the typical blonde-haired aristocrat who wore an arrogant smirk on his lips at all times. Kaya Estrian, L.V. Race. Human Elements. Wind, Ice Danger. The second seat of the freshman and one of the game's heroines, Kaya Estrian, was here as well. She gave a cute impression with two black ribbons tied to her light green hair in the style of pigtails. Wait, just why am I getting embarrassed now that we're actually face dot to dot face? Am I shy anyways, Kaya Estrian had the personality of a kind-hearted and broad-minded individual. Sure, there were some edges to her personality here and there, but they were more like defense mechanisms she used to hide her shyness and embarrassment. She also tended to follow those she admired, like a lost puppy. She is the number one type of girl who should be protected from pseudo-religion propagandists at all cost. She is also very good at making a mountain out of a molehill. She was a cute heroine who would attach a deeper meaning to each and every action Ian would make without putting much thought into them and would often get excited on her own. Whoa! Having seen all of the characters from the game I always used to enjoy in the flesh, my heart was strangely feeling overwhelmed all of a sudden. Welcome, prospective wizards. Eventually, the front door of the lecture hall was opened and our professor entered the room. As he appeared, many of the female students started making various exclamations like, Oh my, oh my god, and so handsome. The professor finally arrived in front of the podium amidst the commotion, staring at the students with a chilling glare as he stood in silence. Fernando Frost, L.V. Race. Human Elements. Ice. Water danger. Unlike the silver dot rimmed student uniform, the gold dot rimmed navy blue uniform was the attire that the academy professors would wear. His well dot groomed silver hair, blue eyes, and tall stature exuded the aura of a professional. Dot Fernando Frost. He was a cold individual who wore an emotionless poker face at all times, as if not even a single drop of blood or tears existed within his body. In reality, however, he was a selfless humanitarian whose mind was always on the safety of and concern for his students. Thanks to this appealing character trait, he was ranked fifth in the character popularity ranking of Dot Magic Knight of M. Dot Raken. Level 98 Although he was definitely at a higher level than most of his students, as a wizard, it was around average. 
For reference, the level of the characters in this setting was determined based on their direct combat power. The level of their knowledge is also involved to a certain extent, but in the end, the most important factor was their ability to use magic well. If the setting of the criteria for a character's level was to be theory.oriented instead, Fernando's level would have been much higher. In fact, that would be the case for most of the professors here. I am Professor Fernando Frost. I am the professor in charge of the provisional third class for this week. Professor Fernando said as such in a smooth, calm tone. The girls in the class seemed to be dying because of the slick charm he possessed. I'm sure he was aware of how handsome he was. This kind of reaction would be normal for someone like him. I envy him. Let's stop talking about any unrelated personal matters and just get straight to the point. Orientation will be held over the course of the next week. Then, when the class placement evaluation is completed and the classes have been properly divided, the lessons will finally start in earnest depending on the level of each class from then on. Professor Fernando continued to speak with the same impassive attitude as before. With that said, for the sake of the future evaluation and to make sure that you are aware of your current level, I will be measuring the amount of everybody's mana from this point forward. Our mana. Oh, right. The amount of everybody's mana gets measured during the first orientation class. It's a minor part of the story, so I always skim through the event whenever I played through the whole episode later on, which caused me to forget about it entirely. Either way, the results of the mana evaluation will end up being useful for my future tests. When the story begins, the main character, Ian Fairytale, is rated in the test as an E rank, the absolute lowest level when it comes to mana, so he ended up becoming an outcast among the students. But later on, as Ian grows rapidly over the course of the story, the students increasingly start to reevaluate him. All right, come out one at a time when your name is called. Following the guidance of Professor Fernando, the students of the provisional third class were able to safely arrive at the training ground along with everybody else. It was a spacious training ground lined with seats for spectators and fine sand making up the floor. In addition to the provisional third class I belonged to, several provisional classes all came out to the field as well. Ian and the heroines had caught my eye in particular. Here, I will be measuring the mana of each and every freshman belonging to the magic department. Professor Fernando used a small stick with a loudspeaker enchantment cast on it to explain the rules to the crowd of freshmen enrolled in the magic department, all of whom were standing together in an orderly manner. Simply put, he was basically using a microphone, although it was called a loudspeaker spell here. Meanwhile, the other professors of the provisional classes were sitting in the stands in order to observe their potential students. First of all, take this. At his words, the assistants began handing out objects to the students that had an appearance similar to hand grippers. Of course, I accepted it as well. The translucent grip felt firm when I held it. This particular magic instrument is a tool that measures the maximum amount of mana of the user by looking at the concentration of their mana. All you have to do is hold it with a firm grip while allowing the mana within you to flow, and then your grade will automatically be displayed before you. That grade is what your current position will be within the academy, so this will be an important reference for any future evaluations. As usual, Professor Fernando gave his speech in a perfect deadpan. Whenever you let your mana flow while trying to measure the amount of your mana, magic commonly tends to come out as a result. With that said, for the sake of the student's safety, I will be doing the measurements in an open space where there are no people for this evaluation. In each class, five people should come out, one group at a time in order from the lowest number. Thus began our first mana evaluation. Note. More chapters will come soon, hope you enjoy these two for now. Chapter 3. Mana Evaluation, 2, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Mana Evaluation, 2, students began emerging from each provisional class and formed a line for each group. After getting into their proper positions, they gripped their mana meter and let their mana flow in an empty direction. All of them emitted an elemental aura with respect to their individual elements. 
after being used, that aura would end up leaving something known as a Thamana Trail. It was evidence that proved whether or not magic of a specific element had been used. In addition to elemental types and mana capacity, this mana evaluation also contained an additional hidden evaluation factor that tested students for their ability in something known as mana control. When mana is channeled, traces of magic could end up remaining as well. Even more so with powerful individuals that possessed greater mana. In other words, what if, after having finished the evaluation of one's total mana capacity, that person obtained a high grade for their result, but there was a lack of a magic aura. It meant that the person in question would end up receiving a very good score for their mana control, which would be added onto their class placement evaluation score. After each person belonging to the first group of students finally finished their mana evaluation, Professor Fernando lifted the mana meters into the air using telekinesis magic, lined them up, and began to read each grade aloud. Provisional third class. First, grade C, second, grade C plus. Third, grade C, fourth, grade C plus. Fifth, grade C. Of course, there wouldn't be any extra points for these guys. Even with that amount of mana, Aura still ended up being released. Next. With that said and done, the mana evaluation continued on. Meanwhile, Hiya. Oh my, I couldn't control my dense, thick, limitless mana, the conceited noble, Tristan Humphrey, shook his head in an exaggerated motion as he cast his overwhelming wind magic. When said with such a confident face, it sounded more like a theatrical line than a serious statement. In the aftermath of his wind magic, both the hair and uniforms of the professors and students alike had been violently shaken. Some of the girls let out a grunt as they patted their hair neatly. Professor Fernando, on the other hand, remained as expressionless as ever. Tristan Humphrey's mana ended up being a grade B. At that level, he was already at the top level of the students belonging to the magic department. His cocky demeanor wasn't an empty bluff after all. Of course, his mana control in particular was a negative score. Matteo Giordana, who was an early villain in the game, also came out with a grade B. Only a bit of his rock elemental aura was released, which was worth a couple of extra points. Next up was this year's first seat, Luz Eltania, along with the second seat, Kaya Astrian. The noisy audience suddenly became quiet as the two girls overflowing with elegance made their entrance. It was to the point where even the air started to feel heavy from their aura. The students' attention were focused entirely on them. Whoa! I unconsciously exclaimed. It was because Luce was much more beautiful in person than in the game. Wide strings could be seen flowing down each side of her silky rose. Gold hair. She was wearing a unique headband that had been designed with a morpho butterfly in mind, with a deep blue color reflected within its intense black border. Her deep blue eyes, which seemed to contain the sea itself, were both clear and pure, and put together with her fair skin and graceful face simply radiated youth to anyone who watched. As I admired Luz along with everybody else, I willed her level to be shown, causing a system window to appear in front of me. Luz Eltania, LV. 110 Race. Human Elements. Water, Lightning Danger. Level 110. It was a number that was completely overwhelming among freshmen. When it came to the characters of Magic Knight of M. Raken, Luce was my second favorite. She was one of the game's official heroines, and she also ended up being paired with the main character, Ian, for the upcoming class placement evaluation in a few days. That's not to say that Kaya Astrian, the second seat, isn't beautiful as well, but... Sorry, I'm just more of a loose person than a Kaya person. Of course, if my favorite character was here, Dorothy Hartnova, it would be a different story entirely. Let's just stop this nonsense and watch. Luce and Kaya, like the other students, clenched the mana meter in their hands and stretched their arm forward. In comparison to the other students who were releasing an elemental aura, the two girls seemed completely calm. 
Then, after a few moments of standing still in silence, Luce and Kaya simply lowered their arms as if nothing had even happened in the first place. The students who were unaware of the existence of any kind of hidden grading factor were perplexed, because they thought the visible release of an aura was a given when using magic. At that level of control, their mana control grade would have definitely received a perfect score. Just as he had done the previous times, Professor Fernando lifted the mana meters the students had been holding with his telekinetic magic. The amount of mana this time will not be announced separately because they are the first seat and the second seat respectively. After a quick explanation, Professor Fernando looked over the grades displayed on Luce and Kaya's mana meters and read them aloud. Luce Eltania, grade A+. Kaya Astrian, grade B+. The students watching from the audience were unable to keep their mouths shut in awe. The A plus grade, which not a single person expected to show up in this examination, had come out of the professor's mouth. Kaya, having become the second seat of the freshman class as well as having grade B plus mana, was already at the level of active wizards. It was a ridiculous feat for a freshman at the academy, but Luce's grade A plus had left such an overwhelming impression that it was left buried. The grade A plus score was widely considered to be the ceiling level for most wizards. With that much talent, becoming a grade S was a step that could easily be accepted as a realistic story. For example, the highest grade that an ordinary person born without any talent could achieve with an immense amount of effort is grade A at best. Grade S was a realm that couldn't be reached without talent. This was all part of the setting that I had read countless times while playing as Luce was both talented and a hard worker, she had already planned to become a grade S before her second year. Grade A+. Plus. Wow. Is she really a freshman like us? Are we really the same age? However, as of now, Luce Eltania was unable to deliver the full extent of her supposed grade A+, plus power. This was a result of the mana evaluation only measuring the maximum capacity, not the amount that could actually be used. She was constantly consuming a considerable portion of mana in order to suppress her familiar, Thunderbird, Galia. Only after the conclusion of her struggle to subjugate the Thunderbird during her final exams would Luce be able to unleash her true power. So then, what was she supposed to do before the Battle of the Thunderbird? Well, at that time, she should be helped by the main character who would be considerably active by then, but unfortunately, it was starting to look like he would be a dumbass. Anyway, amidst the ongoing gossip coming from the crowd of students, Luce and Kaya finally exited the stage. Kaya clenched her fist in frustration while shaking her head. It looks like she's angry. Over the course of the game, Kaya would continue to feel inferior when faced with the solid wall known as Luce. But later on, Kaya would grow strong enough to cast the 8.star ultimate spell, Yggdrasil. In this world, the absolute highest rank of magic was 9. Star, capable of world destruction. Even then, the lower 8.star magic was still powerful enough for large dot scale battles. Despite that, Luce's defeat seemed unlikely. However, Kaya was not the kind of character who lived her life while harboring an inferiority complex after seeing someone better than her. In fact, she had a tendency to admire and blindly follow those who were vastly different and overwhelmingly strong, regardless of their status. As I mentioned before, if she were to ever be deceived into joining a cult, she was the type of person who would definitely get in trouble. Next. Hearing the professor call for the next group, I readied myself. Now, it was my turn. I stepped forward, mingled among the other students, and stood alongside them. Once I had one in my hand, I proceeded to stretch the mana meter forward. Currently, my maximum mana is 320. Now that I was thinking about it, I didn't know much about this world's mana grading standards. It was just a minor detail briefly mentioned when passing through the game story. I wonder how my 320 mana will compare to the average. Start. At the professor's command, I began squeezing the mana meter and poured out all my mana. Controlling this, is a little difficult, isn't it? As a result of my poor control, 
cold air flowed out from where I stood, forming small pieces of ice in the process. Soon, just as I heard a buzzing sound from the mana meter, I immediately cut off the flow of mana. Just what will my grade be? Ignoring my heart fluttering in my chest, I checked the grade displayed on the mana meter. It was grade E. The worst possible grade. You would have gotten a better outcome if you had simply grabbed a random bystander on the streets who lacked any prior experience or knowledge in magic and measured their mana. It's a little, serious, ah, uh, I just remembered. Wasn't there another grade E other than Ian this year? Was that actually me? After Ian's turn in the game, I remembered hearing a student commenting something along the lines of, there are two grade E students this year. Now that I've figured that out, I finally remembered just what kind of character Isaac was. This guy was an extra among extras that ended up with a sense of inferiority towards Ian, despite having a weightless existence. At least Kaya, who felt inferior to Luce, had the tenacity of a second seat. On the other hand, Isaac, who felt inferior to Ian, was pathetic. With that said, at the beginning of the game's story, he became one of Mateo's lackeys and makes several attempts to harass Ian, who was a grade E just like him, but ended up easily getting robbed of that position soon enough. Besides his failed attempts at petty revenge, simply watching Ian's rapid growth made him frustrated to the point where he could only grind his teeth, and in the end, his weight turned to dust forever being nothing more than a third dot raid extra. His purpose was to be a small darkness that would add a halo to Ian's growth, and was commonly considered to be the weakest point in provisional third class. 21st grade C, 22nd grade C, 23rd grade C, 24th grade C, 25th grade E. All the students whose names were announced, including me, headed back to our seats. When Professor Fernando came across my grade while checking the mana meter labeled number 25, his expression appeared to have become perplexed. Grade E. What? So what? Grade E. Wait, did he actually get grade E really? How in the world did a grade E manage to get accepted into the M. Rakan Academy? That's ridiculous, isn't it? That's certainly one hell of a guy in a different sense, huh? Once my meager result was announced, the student's attention was inevitably drawn to me, student number 25. Some laughed at my misfortune, while others were surprised. Rather than the surprise shown at Luce's result, this surprise was more along the lines of, how did you even get into this academy? It basically meant the same thing as mockery. This was M. Raken Academy, the single most prestigious academy on the entire continent. In other words, the fact that someone with a mana capacity equivalent to grade E had managed to make their way into the magic department of the M. Raken Academy was akin to some sort of doubtful miracle. For reference, Ian Fairytale, who would also be graded at the same grade E as myself, was able to enroll thanks to his rarity. It was a result of Ian's unique ability to use light magic. On the other hand, all I had was low dot level ice magic, not a rarity at all. Perhaps the original owner of this body, Isaac, got accepted with his theoretical ability in the entrance exam. In that case, it was a shame that I didn't have any of his theoretical knowledge left in my head right now. Ah. Uh. Wait a sec, the more that I think about it, the more I realize I have nothing to offer, right? Uh, wait, what about? While the students were indulging in their gossip, Professor Fernando suddenly intervened. If you were able to get into our academy with this amount of mana, your theoretical grades must be excellent. Your goal must be a scholar, then. Of course, the role of a magic scholar is significant for the development of the magic system. You'll have to pull yourself together, but don't be discouraged by the others. He said it as if he were sure that being a scholar was my desired career path. Of course, it wasn't something to be angry about. This was Professor Fernando's own way of showing me consideration. At the very least, as long as my goal was known to be a scholar, even with my actual mana capacity being incredibly insufficient among the student body, I would be ridiculed less by the other students. As I recalled, Professor Fernando had said the same thing to Ian in the game as well. 
Ian, then, would become furious and exclaim, my dream is not to be a scholar. My dream is to become a magic knight. After making such an unrealistic claim, he would end up getting countless laughs from the other students in response. Grade E E, huh? How dare such an inferior being stand in the same line as one as superior as myself? It's funny, it's so funny. As expected, Tristan Humphrey, the conceited blonde aristocrat, made a gruesome mockery of my terrible score. The lines he said were funny, sure, but the one saying them was stupid. You bastard. Excuse me. At that time, the second seat, Kaya Astrian, suddenly raised her hand and shouted. What was it this time? I don't think I've ever seen an event like this happening in the game. Have there ever been any cases where an error occurs in the process of evaluating the amount of mana? For example, a case where the grade is measured incorrectly, what? Both Professor Fernando and the students responded to her question as if they couldn't understand. I was the same. Perhaps this was a question stemming from pointless doubts such as, even though somebody as strong as myself is a student at the M. Rican Academy, does it make sense for a grade E to be in the same year? I have no clue. Hmm. I see. First of all, there is nothing wrong with the mana evaluation method. Professor Fernando quietly answered her question in a calm fashion as he picked up my mana meter, which was supposedly the root of the issue at hand. The professor then began to pour his mana into the mana meter, undisturbed by the stares directed at him. Just as one would expect from a professor, no elemental aura was released in the process, and with a ping, the magic power was quickly evaluated on the device. Greta. Professor Fernando confirmed the result and showed it to Kaya. As you can see, the mana meter is working just fine. According to the results of the inspection this morning, there were no abnormalities in the device. At the very least, there has never been a case of an incorrect measurement. If an error occurs, the operation itself won't work because of the device's structure. Is that so? Kaya now had an expression of disappointment on her face, as if Professor Fernando's answer wasn't the one she wanted to hear. Seeing the reaction he was given, Professor Fernando then proceeded to explain the second possible explanation. Of course, there are some cases where the evaluation ends up being wrong even without an error. Rare, but possible. Professor Fernando suddenly made an unfamiliar argument, confusing the students listening. Regardless of their confusion, the students soon understood after his next words. It is said that an archwizard has a level of control over mana beyond the realm of possibility, allowing them to deconstruct and reconstruct the flow of mana within their body. If that's possible, then they could control their mana output during the evaluation to achieve their desired grade. However, this is only possible for archwizards who have been blessed by the heavens and honed themselves through countless hours of meditation, training, and solitude. Without exceptions. Like a method where, even without being an archwizard, you could adjust your magic level, I assure you. There are no exceptions other than this. If there was, they would probably be a superhuman who has already mastered all forms of magic. It would never happen at the student level, even if you were born with a level of genius talent that would be regarded as irrational by global standards. Regardless of any further objections, Professor Fernando continued to assert his point. That was the official setting, after all. An archwizard was perceived in this world as a transcendental being that lived outside the jurisdiction of natural law, and even the emperor would have to be wary of one. Is that so? For some reason, Kaya looked shocked by this well. Known fact. Could she be flustered while thinking, really, a grade E that actually exists at the same M. Rican Academy as myself? She certainly prided herself on being admitted to the prestigious M. Rican Academy. In other words, the grade E that lowered the overall level of the academy must have been a thorn in her eye. Oh, of course, this was just an exaggeration on my part. She was a good natured person, so it was probably just at the level of a minor discomfort. It was definitely a shame, though. Even if you ignored me, Ian was still there as well. 
The fact that there was not just one, but two students with only grade E level mana must have scratched her pride quite a bit. After 40 more minutes of testing, the mana evaluation was finally over. Just as I thought, the story progressed as normal. Ian was graded as a grade E level mana, and after being mistaken for a scholar, ended up revealing his dream of becoming a magic knight to the entire student body, certainly showing off his presence as the main character as he made the students laugh. Facing the students of the Department of Magic, who had finally settled down and began standing in an orderly manner, Professor Fernando began to speak. The mana evaluation has concluded. Each of you should be aware of your own position, keep it in mind every moment, and use it as a stimulus for your devotion to magic. You may be aware of this already, but I will emphasize it here once more. The tradition of our M. Rakan Academy is survival of the fittest. The strong consume the weak, and the weak are consumed. So be strong to the core if you want to avoid being consumed. Try as hard as you can in order to survive. That is all. I had experienced the harsh educational climate of the M. Rakan Academy several times already while playing the game. Ha, huh, the weakest, the grade E isn't that the perfect prey to be bullied in this environment. With that in mind, I thought that I would have to try to keep myself from standing out for a while. For some reason, I could still feel Kaya glaring daggers at me. I had been pretending not to notice her stare for a while now, but I was sure the reason for it was because of my grade E. It seemed like it would be a rough start from the very beginning. Chapter 4 Goal You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Goal M. Raken Academy. The entirety of a vast, remote island located in the eastern part of the continent was the M. Raken Academy itself. They had established their own independent economic system. First and foremost, the currency used was not the prevalent currency that was commonly used elsewhere. The only currency that could be used here was referred to as gel. The most common method for a student to earn gel was undergoing either a performance evaluation or another form of testing. It would then be distributed in varying amounts depending on one's grades or some other specific criteria. It was also possible to earn gel by working part-time, but it wasn't very efficient. It would be best to think of it as a supplementary measure when running low. Other than that, converting local money into gel was another valid method used by students. However, it was only possible before the start of each semester, at least until the first semester's tuition was paid for. If you had a lot of gel, you could even pay the tuition with it as well. What if I were to run out of gel? In that case, I would have no choice but to borrow some from somebody else, go to the academy bank for a loan, or try and work part-time. I would end up starving otherwise. This was a harsh place, after all. At the beginning of the year, all of the freshmen who came to the academy were given 5,000 gel. With the textbooks and school uniforms already being fully provided by the academy, unless you overspent on anything unnecessary, you would definitely have enough to last until the next performance evaluation at the very least. Knowing that, I decided to use my gel in moderation at the student cafeteria for my lunch and dinner. Despite that, everything still ended up tasting delicious and I felt fully satisfied. What a strange feeling this was. Anyways, after defeating Trevion earlier in the day and personally experiencing the entire entrance ceremony and orientation, I was now fully convinced that I had been transmigrated into the world of I also made a trip over to the library to read an Introduction to Basic Magic, textbook that I believe to be appropriate for my current level. Fortunately enough, understanding the contents of the textbook was not too difficult, possibly due to my prior knowledge of the game. After confirming that fact, I also went ahead and took out an Introduction to Advanced Magic textbook and began reading. Oh, it's more difficult than I thought. Physics. Chemistry. I'm not quite sure which it was, being a liberal arts major myself, but it felt like I was seeing something similar. Just looking at the complicated formulas and equations made me start feeling dizzy, so I quickly closed the book and headed back to the dormitory. At M. Rakan Academy, there were a total of four dormitories. 
the dormitory you're assigned to is determined by grades each semester. As for myself, I resided in the Doris Hall, the lowest-ranking dormitory with relatively poor facilities as a result. The dormitories were assigned to each student based on their entrance exam scores. Just as you would expect, Doris Hall was a dormitory for the inferior students. A gathering place for those with the lowest grades in the academy. Ian Fairytale, the protagonist, also resided here for the time being. I entered my room. All of my belongings had already been transferred into my room. Clothes, toiletries, disposables, writing utensils, and everything else I needed. In any case, it was quite a small room. Of course, by that, I meant that it was just small in comparison to the other dorms. As an experienced civil service exam taker who had been previously living in a 3. Pyong studio in Silim. Dong, I was able to wholeheartedly attest to the fact that it was spacious, clean, and luxurious. For reference, the academy had purposefully made the facilities in here more narrow than the other dormitories for the purpose of motivating students to try and get out of here. Elitism, indeed. Even despite that, however, the showers were still extremely well dot equipped. I'm stuck in a place like this. Ha. Huh. What? That startled me. It sounded like somebody was shouting in the room next door, a cry filled with the strong will to escape. It seemed that a room like this must have been a sizable blow for the spoiled aristocrats, who had always lived their entire lives in an extremely nice place. I shut the door behind me and sat myself down on the bed. The single bed felt incredibly soft as it gently enveloped my buttocks. It had already been three full days since I transmigrated into this game. If I were to fall asleep tonight and still not end up back in my own reality, then just as I've thought to myself many times ever since I came here, my goal was clear. I needed to clear this game. The main problem currently was that Ian, the main character whose death would serve as the condition for a bad ending, was no better than a shitty newbie. Hell, difficulty was obviously an extremely challenging experience, starting with the enemy specs. As a result, the player was required to have excellent control abilities from the very start. On the other hand, Ian, this bastard, had already almost gotten a bad ending right at the beginning of the first day, and there was no guarantee that this would not continue to happen in the future. If that's the case, I just have to get stronger. If the protagonist is useless, then there is only me. An unpredictable variable with the ability to prevent the numerous bad endings of this world. According to the scenario, this was because Ian, despite being a human, was born with the light element, which was a demon's only weakness. As such, Ian would be able to defeat demons even with significant level differences between them. Normally, light elemental abilities and divine powers were only usable by the noble saintesses blessed by God. Simply put, it should have been impossible for Ian, an ordinary human, to have the light element from birth. However, it eventually came to light that within Ian flowed the mixed blood of a human and a heavenly being, who naturally wielded divine power. This is the full explanation of how he was born with the ability to wield divine power without a blessing. It was a backstory supposed to come out as a twist later on. Of course, both Ian and I must gradually improve our strengths together. The light element had many uses besides direct combat, and if he still couldn't use his divine power later on, demons with an invincible status would begin appearing regardless. When that time comes, Ian will have to dispel their invincible status by using the 8. Star Light Element Ultimate Spell, expelled from Paradise, along with his final weapon, Luminous Sword. In other words, it was necessary to at least be strong enough to properly progress the story. In the end, though, the biggest issue is still going to be the final boss. The game's final boss, Nephid, evil god of destruction. It was a damn tough boss. In hell, difficulty, even if the player maxed out their specs, if they were hit even once, it would be game over. This was because Nephid could cast 9. Star magic, a level of power capable of destroying the world. The magic circle for resurrecting the sealed evil god Nephid was engraved on the roof of Bardas Hall in M. Raken Academy. 
However, it would be impossible to even see or touch the engraving because of a nine-dot star spell blocking absolute perception. What if you destroy the building? During a QA event for the game, a user had asked that exact question to the developers, and I certainly still remembered the answer to that question even now. The developers had responded by saying, it would be meaningless to destroy the building because the magic circle itself is actually engraved beyond time and space. In the end, the evil god Nephid was bound to be resurrected when the time came. Still, if I could just catch Nephid, that would end everything. The demons would no longer be a threat because Nephid was the one who had sent them to Ian in the first place. Nephid was still sealed away in the abyss, and could only release a little bit of mana to the outside world at a time. The mana Nephid sent outside would be used to wake up the demons that lay dormant beneath the surface. It was this restriction that made him only able to send a few demons to kill Ian every once in a while. All this meant was that I needed to prevent the bad ending by defeating all the demons myself. In order to clear this game, I need to become strong enough to beat the final boss as well, as long as I was Isaac, the goal was clear. Let's check my current potential. Potential, stat points. 25. Growth rate, physical training efficiency, D+. 16 out of 100, up, magic training efficiency, D. 10 out of 100, up, learning efficiency, D. 12 out of 100, up. Elemental resistance, fire resistance, E. 0 out of 100, up, water resistance, D. 6 out of 100, up, ice resistance, C. 24 100, up, lightning resistance, C. 29 out of 100, up, rock resistance, E. 2 out of 100, up, wind resistance, D. 13 out of 100, up, neutral magic resistance, D. 8 out of 100, up. Versus race combat power, versus human combat power, E. 4 out of 100, up, versus. Other races combat power, E. 1 out of 100, up, versus heavenly beings combat power, E. 0 out of 100, up, versus demon combat power, S. 100 out of 100, max, where should I invest my stat points first? It's finally time to start thinking about the future. There will be a class placement evaluation soon, and around that time, another demon would appear. The problem was that, in order to catch that demon, there was a harsh condition attached where I would be forced to avoid elimination for about 5 hours in a battle royale against only those stronger than me. However, if I were to try and increase my immediate chances of survival by increasing my, versus human combat power, potential, I would end up being much further away from defeating the evil god Nephid in the long run. I definitely needed to level up even just a little bit faster. Then, I should give top priority to the, physical training efficiency, and, magical training efficiency, potentials. After making my decision, I proceeded to distribute 10 stat points to, physical training efficiency, and 15 to, magic training efficiency. Ding! Potential, physical training efficiency, has increased from D plus to C. Potential, magical training efficiency, has increased from D to C. Even with this, I don't expect any dramatic effect until the upcoming class placement evaluation, but I hope it's at least as good as the figures show. Now that I've finished that, the next thing I need to do is make myself a training plan. With that said, I was starting to feel exhausted already. As I sat at my desk, unfolded the parchment, and began writing down my future plans. In the middle of that, I somehow fell asleep. Asterisk 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 each and every room of the top dot ranked dormitory of M. Rican Academy, Charles Hall, was luxurious, truly befitting its splendid exterior. After all, this was a super dot luxurious facility where only the top 10 students from each department and year could stay. There were also facilities that could be used by employees. The academy itself had prepared high quality human resources for students living at Charles Hall. It was there that Kaya Astrian, 
the prodigious second seat of the freshman class at the Department of Magic, was seated at her desk while resting her chin on her palms, deeply lost in her own thoughts. Inside a dark room, the soft light of an enchanted lamp quietly illuminated the figure of her in a luxurious nightgown. It really just doesn't make any sense at all, Kaya was reflecting on what she had witnessed earlier today. This morning, when that man with silver dot blue colored hair defeated the demon. Kaya clearly felt an overwhelming amount of mana overflowing from within him. Yet, at the time of the mana evaluation, the same man achieved grade E, the worst grade. It was an obvious contradiction. It could only mean that the mana meter he used was broken. Was it possible that the silver dot blue haired man just didn't let any of his mana leak out? Impossible. She already confirmed that there was elemental aura flowing out. Besides, even at that time, Kaya herself had even felt his feeble mana personally. There's no way that's true. After all, the ability that the silver dot blue haired man had showcased when he obliterated the demon was already at a level far superior to her own. It wasn't that she mistook his ability either, since Kaya knew how to manipulate wind and ice elements herself. Therefore, she had an eye for ice magic. The moment she saw his five-dot star spell, Frost Explosion, she felt like she was watching a masterpiece that had been created by a master craftsman with great care for decades. How in the world could such an expert be classified as a mere grade E? She was about to burst into laughter when the topic first came up. Contrary to her expectation, Professor Fernando had insisted that the manometer's results were impossible to get wrong. The silver-blue-haired young man, number 25, did not raise any objections to such a claim and just continued to stay silent. In spite of all the ongoing giggles and mockery of the surrounding students. It was almost as if he had known this would happen from the very start. An arch-wizard is an existence able to easily change their maximum mana at will, she couldn't help but think back to the words she heard before. To be able to fake their amount of mana, by changing mana itself. How would that be any different from the absurd claim that each and every cell in your body could also be changed at will? No, in the first place, an arch-wizard was a being that would transcend common sense just by existing, so even if that's possible. It still didn't make any sense that a student the same age as her was successfully able to reach the level of an arch-wizard. An arch-wizard was an honorable title that was given only to those who have been recognized as the absolute best wizards across the entire continent. Even the most successful first-class wizards, such as the Tower Masters, the leaders of well-renowned and high-ranking guilds, or court wizards, were not even comparable to the size of a fingernail in front of an arch-wizard. Even Kaya's family, the Ducal House of Astrian, with their high social status, would be forced to bow their heads in front of an archwizard. The level of an archwizard was at the point where, whether it was heaven's blessings, an unparalleled talent, or bone-breaking efforts, all of it was required. In the first place, although the man who was number 25 had powerful mana when facing the demon, it was still a bit weaker than the first dot class wizards Kaya had seen thus far. It was not enough power to confidently state that he had already reached the level of an archwizard. However, even thinking about it that way couldn't explain the inconsistency of his mana being grade E. I noticed that the black dot haired man earlier didn't know about him either. After the silver dot blue haired man left, Kaya went and woke up the person named Ian Fairytale who was passed out in the clearing and used healing magic to treat his wounds. His wounds actually recovered themselves surprisingly quickly, as if Kaya's healing magic only served as an accelerator. During the healing process, she asked Ian if he knew the man who defeated the demon. To her disappointment, he seemed to be completely unaware. In the first place, his attention at the time was focused entirely on the demon that had already turned to ashes and vanished by that point. She decided it would just end up being a waste of time to keep asking him, so Kaya stopped talking. Could it be a secret where I'm the only one who knows student number 25 is actually strong? She had already told Ian that she would report the issue of the appearance of a demon to the academy. After the mana evaluation was finally over, she decided to report it to Professor Fernando. She couldn't bear to see it be reported any later. 
demons weren't known for their collective behavior and typically appeared as natural disasters. In other words, there was never any kind of rush to report it when the aforementioned demon had already been slain. However, after hearing the result of the mana evaluation of the person who defeated the demon, with Fernando's explanation added on top of that, Kaya reported the incident a little differently from the truth. She reported that the demon was already dying, and disappeared soon after. That was why she didn't know the identity of the demon slayer. All because she had suddenly thought of an unbelievable possibility. Really, no, really, that's got to be nonsense, after the perception of the impossibility and possibility that had been layered on top of each other, slowly peeled away, the truth hidden underneath was finally revealed. Finally, Kaya voiced the possibility. If it's true that number 25 has reached the level of an archwizard, then. What if he arbitrarily adjusted his mana when he defeated the demon earlier today? If that's the case, then, is that person a so dot called genius among geniuses, surpassing all of the arch wizards that have ever been recorded in history? What had long been considered an absolute, immutable truth could easily be overturned at any time, whenever an exception were to appear. This was something that humanity had only been able to deduce with inductive reasoning thus far. However, what if today, the very exception that had only been spoken of in theory had suddenly appeared? What if that exception was number 25, the man with silver dot blue hair? That's amazing. Thrill. Excitement. These were the emotions she felt when arriving at this conclusion. It meant that he was a being who would become a legend. And she was the first person to know his identity. It felt surreal. She felt as if she was facing a monumental truth that she shouldn't have known. Kaya began to tremble and the corners of her mouth twitched upward. No, no. Don't get ahead of yourself just yet. The professor already said it himself that it was impossible. Let's think carefully. When she calmed down and went over the details once again, it was clear that this was impossible. In fact, it was something no different from something in the realm of fantasy. But, what if it's real? Really, what if it's really real? What if he went and entered the academy while hiding his true power for some unknown reason? Without realizing it, Kaya's thoughts had already reached this point. So then, under the assumption that this person was an important figure hiding their identity, her mind became focused on keeping quiet about his contribution to defeating the demon, seeing as he was pretending to be a weakling. I need to find out. In the end, Kaya resolved herself to speak to number 25 tomorrow. Chapter 5 Realm of an Archwizard You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Realm of an Archwizard In the Morning, I Finished the Orientation for Introduction to Basic Magic. The content itself was easy to understand, thanks to having played. It didn't tell me much, though. After class, I headed to the student cafeteria for lunch. Hey, that person, is he that grade E guy from yesterday? Really, how did he get in here? He's not good enough, while sitting alone and eating my 50 gel lunch, I could hear the mocking remarks directed at me from another table. Considering their lack of subtlety, they clearly meant for me to hear everything they were saying. I felt it before, but it seems the fact that I was a grade E in mana was spreading among the students. The academy advocated for a system where the weak were oppressed by the strong, so naturally, students openly looked down on those ranked lower than them. As a grade E who scored even lower than E in fairy tale, who also had the same grade E mana, this fate was inevitable, since I was the weakest student. In other words, I can't beat anyone here. Let's just ignore it for now. Today was the fourth day since I came to this game world and as expected, I couldn't go back to reality even if I fell asleep regularly. Seeing as I have to stay here, I shouldn't go and antagonize other students since it would make my academic life difficult. It was best to just ignore them. I didn't have time to worry about such trivial stuff anyway, I instead had to devote all of my time to training from now on, meaning I had no time to worry about anything else. This morning, 
I had some time before my classes for the day started, so I decided to jot down my plans for the future on a piece of parchment paper, recalling my previous memories of playing the game while doing so. As for my first priority, I was thinking of aiming for the top of this department. Grades were not only the easiest, but also the most indicative way to measure how strong an individual is, and since I needed to be the strongest to survive, it was imperative that I increased my grades. My ultimate goal was to eventually surpass the top seat, loose, and I would do what needed to be done in order to achieve that goal. As a side note, getting low grades wasn't an option. If I failed repeatedly, I would be expelled, kicked out of the academy, and then this world would receive a bad ending. With that in mind, I planned to go and find the legendary weapon, Hilda's Frost Scythe. Hilda's Frost Scythe is the final ice element weapon, and in the original game, it could be obtained after the second year's second semester. But, because I wasn't bound by the story of the game like Ian Fairy Tale, it didn't matter. I want to get it before the end of the first year if possible, to obtain Hilda's Frost Scythe, I needed to complete the trial given by Ice Dragon Hilda, but in order to even think of receiving said trial, I had to first raise my Ice Element Resistance to 60 at the very least. I needed to become strong enough to get Hilda's Frost Scythe as soon as possible. According to the setting in the original game, one person could only use up to two kinds of elemental magic, depending on whether or not they were compatible with it. The only exception to this was the power of fairies. I didn't know what element that Ian, who currently only used light magic, would choose from among fire, water, ice, lightning, rock, and wind in the future. That was because, in the game, the second element of Ian was decided by the player, but now that wasn't the case. If he chooses the ice element, Hilda's frost scythe will be his final target. Sorry, that's mine now, I have nothing to give to a fucking newbie. So I could only hope that he wouldn't choose the ice element. I have to clear the game no matter what. I'm going to get as strong as I can in order to win this game. It was my specialty to achieve my goals through grit and hard work. It was an asset that I had acquired throughout my life studying for exams. I played as both a break and a reward after a long day of studying. Although, on my day off I would play it all day long, and this only continued after I passed the exam. I could have never imagined that I would be transported into as an extra, and I could tell it would be a long and arduous battle before my final goal was achieved. I'll commit evil deeds without hesitation. Fufufu, fufufu, hey, is that kid laughing? Oh, I burst out laughing without realizing it. I seem to have been too engrossed in myself. I could hear someone comment when I laughed, but I didn't care. After the meal, I was walking toward the classroom. How are you? When suddenly, someone greeted me from behind. I came to a halt and looked back. I saw a familiar female student with light green pigtails tied with black hairbands and two eyes that were a beautiful jade color, shining like emeralds. Kaya Astrian, the second seat freshman in the Department of Magic, was dressed in her school uniform. Kaya Estreen, LV. Race. Human elements. Wind, ice danger. But. Why is Kaya talking to me? Is it to give advice like an old man, to work hard because I'm an unimportant grade E? If it's Kaya, that could be the case since she's nosy. Number 25 of Provisional Third Class, right. Was it because of the impression that a grade he gave? She managed to remember my number. Ah yes, you remember my number. I just answered out of curiosity, but suddenly Kaya's shoulders trembled. Ah, uh, I didn't remember it because I was interested in you. She turned her head sideways and answered in a timid tone. Her face grew red with embarrassment. Kaya had a shy personality, so she reacted to even a hint of embarrassment like this, one could even call it a defense mechanism. Wow, she's really familiar. Is it because I saw her in the game? I almost flashed her a smile that could only be described as fatherly. I had no reason to show such a smile, so I kept my mouth shut and looked at Kaya, waiting for her to speak. Hmm, Kaya cleared her throat and looked back at me. Do you remember me? 
from the same provisional third class. Kaya Astrian. Yes, because you're the second seat. Suddenly, there was an awkward air. What is this feeling? Was there anything strange about what I just said? Ah. Oh, right. Kaya Astrian was the second daughter of the Duke of Astrian, who was responsible for managing the western part of this country, Zelvra. She was, in other words, a high dot ranking aristocrat, whose name was known by all. On the other hand, I was a commoner without a surname. Her status was too high for me to just say, I remember you because you're the second seat. It would have been natural if I had added something like, I remember you because you are from the Astrian family. Do I have to be polite now? It's an honor to talk to you. No, it's a bit too much. What is your name, by any chance? Thank God. Kaya immediately blew away my worries by asking a single question. It's Isaac. Isaac. Isaac, Kaya repeated my name twice as if to clearly engrave it into her mind. I was both flattered and thankful for her reaction. I felt like I had made a huge mistake by forgetting to add the daughter of the Duke's family part, but it seems like my worries were needless since Kaya was too kind to bully me. The real problem was the students who occasionally stole glances at me and Kaya as they passed. They tried to infer the contents of the conversation by reading our lips. Did Kaya just talk to a grade E commoner? Why? Is she here to call him pathetic because he's grade E? It's Lady Kaya, she probably came to say something because he was so pitiful. It seemed that their conversation was roughly going this way. The situation where the second seat freshman of the magic department and the daughter of the Astrian family with grade B plus mana spoke to the weakest freshman with grade E mana and was a commoner was simply absurd. What should I do? It was unnatural, but would it be better to bow down at a right angle and say, nice to meet you, lady of the dignified duke family. Isaac, I'll ask you straightforwardly. Why are you hiding your identity? Ha! Huh. What does she mean by that? What are you talking about? You can't hide it from me. You're hiding your identity, aren't you? Kaya looked nervous. What kind of bullshit is this? No way. Wait a minute. I get it. Kaya must have witnessed me defeat Trevion the evil. Could it be that, then? The next memory that came to my mind was yesterday's mana evaluation. When Professor Fernando said something about an archwizard being able to deceive the maximum amount of mana, I remembered the look Kaya had on her face. If it was true that she witnessed the scene of me defeating Trevion, then the expression on her face was quite convincing. I showed overwhelming power in front of Kaya, yet according to the mana meter, my mana was only grade E. Anyone would look at the two events and think it was ridiculous. Wait, could it be that? Does she think I am a genius among geniuses who has reached the level of an archwizard? The realm of an archwizard. You can hide your own mana, right? Kaya asked quietly on purpose so that no one could hear. My head was throbbing. Kaya felt inferior to Luce, but she had a tendency to harbor admiration for people whom she found out of her reach. Perhaps I was seen as the latter. She was someone who blindly followed such people. Yes, this girl who appeared flawless, was in reality a fool among fools. First of all, Kaya's misunderstanding was troublesome for me since I needed to be regarded as a weak commoner by people unconditionally in the beginning, but if she suddenly started saying things like Isaac is actually strong, people's perception of me might change. As Isaac, I need a reason to be Mateo's subordinate for a while. First, however, the most dangerous problem is whether or not the fact that I defeated the demon was reported to the school. If reported, it would be a very serious issue. I guess not. But I concluded immediately that it wasn't the case. If my contribution in defeating the demon had been reported, the academy would have made a big deal out of it and rewarded me. In particular, Alice, one of the most powerful people in the academy and the president of the student council, wouldn't have stayed still. If she had heard the news, she would have tried to approach me in any way possible. 
If you looked at the story of Dot Magic Knight of M. Rakan, Alice couldn't touch Ian, the main character, rashly because he came from the fairy tale Viscount family. But, it wouldn't matter even if she killed an insignificant commoner like me at any time. In other words, Alice was unaware of the fact that I had defeated the demon. You didn't say anything. Why is that? Why, Kaya? Even if it would cause me a headache later, it seems I needed to go along with this fool's misunderstanding. A momentary silence descended upon us as I carefully thought of my next words. After closing my eyes and opening them, I sighed quietly and spoke with a serious expression. Did you tell anyone about me? An age.old cliché, a nerd that hides their power. In short, someone who pretends to be powerless. I decided to imitate that role. I didn't, no, that. I reported it to the academy the same day the demon appeared at the entrance ceremony, but I said I didn't know who killed the demon, on purpose. I tried to endure the tingling of my hands and limbs and looked at Kaya. Perhaps understanding the flow of the atmosphere, Kaya was clearly nervous. She seemed to think that her guess was correct. Why? Because you seem to want to hide your power, anyway, thank God she noticed. It was a relief that Kaya was very perceptive in matters like these. She almost caused a game over without even knowing it. I could roughly guess how the Academy must have reacted to Kaya's report. In the setting of Dot Magic Knight of M. Rakan, demons were regarded as natural disasters. If it had already been dealt with, there was nothing more to look at. The most important thing was student safety and since everyone was safe beside the sole victim Ian, the only thing they would do is mark him for a few days and be done with it. The Academy's staff members got in a lot of trouble because so many demons appeared in Dot Magic Knight of M. Rakan. Thus holding the chairman accountable for the potential dangers of the situation and the inevitable commotion a demon brought. Nevertheless, the Academy's staff members somehow managed to solve every problem so that it doesn't interfere with the Academy's curriculum. They don't get much attention despite the amount of important and troublesome tasks they have to take care of. Alice must have been looking for the person who defeated the demon by now. She was unaware of how demons were created, so she didn't know when and where a demon would appear, however, she knew to an extent, that it was Nephid's will that demons arose. Nephid had a simple goal in mind when creating demons, and that was eliminating any potential threats to them. So, Alice had no choice but to look for the one who defeated the demon. Let's maintain this atmosphere for now. I closed my eyes and let out a deep sigh on purpose as I pretended to be annoyed. You said your name was Kaya, right? Why dot yes? I opened my eyes and glared at her with a gaze that was even colder than death's embrace. Don't tell anyone about me. Kaya froze. She resembled a cornered deer, trembling before a beast trying to devour her. She was weak in front of someone who showed overwhelming skill that she wasn't even close to matching. Let's stop here. If the player took Kaya's lover route, she was imaginative enough to guess every word that would come from Ian's mouth, which naturally caused her to think badly of herself. Bed o dem I quietly left the place. I had to run away before Kaya regained her senses and said anything else, and now that it was like this, I shouldn't reveal my true identity. Luckily, she still had a frightened expression on her face. We spoke quietly, so the students watching us shouldn't have heard what we were talking about. But can I just leave it like this? Well, it'll probably be fine. I was right, Kaya trembled like an aspen tree as she recalled her interaction with Isaac. She shuddered like a lamb that felt the fear of death in front of a wolf. The strength in her legs was giving out, and it seemed like even the slightest touch would cause her to collapse. Her beating heart continued to race faster and faster as an intense fear rushed in like a tidal wave, gripping her entire body, and preventing her from moving. A warning. That was a warning. Isaac's red eyes were the vibrant color of blood. When the image of him crushing a powerful demon merged with the hostility she had seen earlier today, it became a source of fear for her. Isaac was definitely hiding his true identity and judging from their earlier conversation, 
he must have been pretending to be weak for whatever reason. What should I do? Kaya blamed herself for trying to find out more about Isaac. To him. She had gotten on his bad side. Chapter 6 Class Placement Evaluation 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Class Placement Evaluation 1. In three days, there will be a class placement evaluation. It was an event where the main character, Ian Fairytale, and one of the heroines, Lou Seltania, would get entangled. As for why they got involved, it was because a demon suddenly appeared. Right before Ian and Luce fought, a demon emerged and the two joined forces to fight the demon, and Ian ended up protecting Luce. Ian was just protecting Luce, thinking that she was caught off guard. Anyway, they succeeded in defeating the demon and after the class placement evaluation was over, Luce started caring for Ian because of the memories they formed that day. The two of them end up dating because Luce was vulnerable to situations where she is being protected. Of course, none of this would matter if Ian were to lose again at the beginning. In the first place, there was no need for Ian to protect Luce. Dot if Luce didn't take the lover route, she would live with living my life my way as her motto and instead become a supporting character who occasionally helped Ian. Even if Ian didn't protect Luce, there wouldn't be any problems with the story. My role was to simply defeat the demon without much thought. By the way, even if Ian was defeated and Luce was left alone, she could still defeat the demon. The problem with that, however, was that it led directly to a bad ending. So, the key to that event was to defeat the demon as quickly as possible and prevent a bad ending from occurring. However, the class placement evaluation started at 2 o'clock p.m., and the demon wouldn't appear until 7 o'clock p.m. The class placement evaluation was a survival game where everyone was an enemy besides yourself. In that battle royale, I would have to survive for five hours until the demon appeared while being the weakest student. Firstly physical training, secondly magic training, then introduction to basic magic, and finally the study of elementary ice science, I started to move according to the training plan that I had drawn up in advance. As dusk descended, I arrived at the corner of the butterfly garden. The place I had arrived at was an open area. Under the dark and gloomy evening sky, I deeply inhaled the grassy air. Probably because the location was so large, it was easy to find a deserted place. Who? From now on, I intended to use the one dot star spell, ice generation, like crazy. Basic elemental magic was very useful, and it was necessary to master it first because it was the basis of all magic. Ice generation, that I stretched out my hands into the air and let the ice mana flow. Ice generation, ice element, one, I repeatedly produced ice blocks the size of soccer balls before removing them through unfreezing. I used up almost all the mana I was able to muster, before patiently waiting for my mana to replenish itself and then doing it all over again. Despite the cold weather, Beads of sweat were dripping down my body as if I was standing in the rain, the fatigue that I had been ignoring so far finally settled in, causing my energy to dwindle and blood to start flowing from my nose. Spending mana recklessly was more arduous than I thought. Then, after two hours had passed, I headed to one of the seven gyms with an exhausted body. Most of the students in the Department of Magic aimed to become wizards, so they didn't feel the need to come to the gym. It was much more efficient to study magic theory or increase your magic proficiency while training your muscles in moderation for conditioning and health. I'd rather train according to the standards of this world, but in, having good stamina came with a variety of benefits, both in terms of growth and overall progression of the story. In other words, physical training was something that no one could deny the importance of. Oh, oh. When I arrived at the gym, I saw students from the night department in sportswear exercising with great intensity. A party of steel for men. I felt like I was going to drown in all the testosterone that was radiating from their bodies. There really isn't anyone from the magic department, is there? Fortunately, I didn't see any students who seemed to be from the magic department after looking around for a bit. 
If there were, I would have been criticized for things like, he's a commoner with grade E mana but doesn't train his magic and instead chooses to do outrageous exercises, it's clear that he doesn't understand what he's studying. Wouldn't I lose all interest in exercising? Ugh. I started with the bench press. I put a collective 20 kilograms of iron on the left and right of a 20 kilograms iron bar, for a total weight of 40 kilograms. I could feel the fit students of the night department glancing at me. It must have been a strange sight to see a normal dot looking magic department student trying to exercise. Let's ignore it. Uff hi. Hi haa gritting my teeth, I lifted the iron bar with all my strength. Ha. I managed to lift the iron bar up for five reps, then rested. I lifted it five more times. Rest. Then another five times. Rest. Blurch, I dropped it as is. I felt like I've already completely overworked my arm and chest muscles. Is this really my limit? I was staring at the ceiling for a moment when suddenly four muscular male students rushed towards me. Are you a student at the magic department? Oh, man, it's intimidating to be surrounded by such muscular individuals. It was natural for them to notice that I was in the magic department, since the navy blue sweatshirt I was wearing right now was for the magic department. But what were students of the night department doing here? Yeah, what about it? Why exercise? Are you an aspiring magic knight? I wasn't able to think much because I was tired, so after taking a deep breath I just told them the first thing that came to mind. I just want to become stronger. The eyes of the male students from the night department lit up. How did, the atmosphere become like this? I know that feeling very well. To think there would be a person with such a wonderful mindset in the magic department. Yes. If you want to be strong in magic or whatever else, exercise is essential. Can we teach you how to properly exercise? What? Are you guys saying you want to become my personal trainers, right now? Before I came to this world, I would frequently go to the gym and I would always hear that getting a personal trainer was an effective way of helping you exercise, but they were too expensive for me to even think of hiring one. The students from the night department had better muscles than any personal trainer I had ever seen so it seemed like a good idea to accept their proposal. I'd appreciate it if you could. Soon I would regret those words. Dot. The muscles all over my body were screaming in pain. I couldn't even walk properly. Uggak, the training of the night department students could only be described as hell. You're doing great. Good. Great. One more rep, one more rep. I forcibly lifted the iron while thinking I was going to die. The effect was certain as every single one of my muscle cells were aching. They wanted to see me again tomorrow, it seems they had fun teaching me how to exercise. Status, name. Isaac L.V. Gender. Male year. First title. Freshman mana. 250-320, mana recovery speed, D. Stamina, D. Strength, D, intelligence, D, willpower, B, potential. Details. There was no immediate change in stamina and strength, it seemed that they would only increase after new muscle tissues were formed. Ah, my body had reached its limit. Seriously. I barely made it to the dormitory, after crawling like a drunk. I had to study now, but my stamina didn't last. As soon as I entered the room, I kicked the bucket, and fell asleep on the floor before I even got to bed. Dot. Status, name. Isaac L.V. Gender. Male year. First title. Freshman mana. 340-340, mana recovery speed, D, stamina, D, strength, D+, plus, intelligence, D+, plus, willpower, B, potential. Details. Combat skills, Elemental Series 1. Ice, Elemental Firepower, D, Elemental Efficiency, D+, plus, Elemental Synergy, C, Elemental Series 2, Locked, it was difficult to expect dramatic changes in just 3 days but I did grow a little. 
As a result of training, my level rose by one. I invested the newly acquired two stats in magic training efficiency, and thanks to that, my magic training efficiency went up from C to C. My abilities also increased and my mana was raised by 20. Mana recovery speed, stamina, strength, intelligence, elemental firepower, and elemental efficiency also rose by one level each. I'm seeing less growth than when I was playing the game. It seemed impossible for me to grow as fast as when I was playing the game as Ian. It was probably a matter of overall potential, so it would be clear to anybody that I was the weakest student at the academy with grade E mana. However, if I kept raising physical training efficiency and magical training efficiency, my growth rate would skyrocket later. The preparations are, I prepared for the class placement evaluation by buying 10 slingshots, magic pouches, a few magic tools, and a magic cloak of disguise. The slingshot was easily obtainable at the general store, and the magic tools at the magic tool store. However, the magic tools were a little on the expensive side. The cloak of disguise could only be bought at a secret shop, which required taking a secret route to find, since ordinary magic tool stores only sold perception. Impairing glasses. Perception. Impairing glasses only made it difficult to distinguish faces, but did not hide physique or voice. On the other hand, the cloak of disguise could completely change the physique and voice of the wearer, effectively making them look like a different person. The reason for this lied in the optical illusion cast upon it, which altered the perception of those who looked at it. If I wore this outfit, I would be able to hide myself in front of Luce's sharp eyes and photographic memory, since if she realized my true identity, she would report it to the academy's office, and inevitably, it would reach the ears of the student council president. It's very expensive, just like one would expect from the secret store, the magic cloak of disguise cost me a sizable 3,000 gels. Fortunately, I had just enough after eating nothing but a 10 gel piece of bread every day, I wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. In the end, I was robbed of all my fortune. However, depending on the results of the class placement evaluation, the gel allocated would increase, so I had no choice but to get a decent grade. Dot. We will start the class placement evaluation today. It was the day of the class placement evaluation. The midday sky was clear and blue. The magic department's provisional third class had arrived in front of a dense forest located on the west side of the academy, the forest was called Delphine Forest. There, Professor Fernando faced the provisional third class while standing in an orderly manner. The rules are simple, all you have to do is find as many mana grains as you can within the allotted time. They are hidden throughout the Delphine Forest, and if you bring the watch I gave you close to the mana grains, they will naturally attach themselves to it. The mana grains cannot be removed from the watch once they are attached. The contents of M. Rican Academy's performance evaluations and exams changed every year, and they were all revealed on the same day. In other words, this was the first time the students heard the contents of the class placement evaluation. I looked down at the watch on my left wrist. The hour and minute hands indicated that it was currently 1.30 p.m. My name, Isaac, was engraved on the watch band in magical characters. I just have to bring this closer to the mana grains. Mana grains emitted weak mana, making them difficult to detect. In other words, the most important thing in this class placement evaluation was mana perception. For reference, mana could only be detected if it was emitted, meaning even a person with excellent mana perception couldn't detect mana from Luceltania when she wasn't using magic. Mana perception that was sensitive enough to detect mana that wasn't being released was in the realm of an archwizard. Mana perception. That's easy. It is simple. I am confident. The students listened to the exam contents, shrugged their shoulders, and started chattering. These were the students who would soon be terrified after hearing Professor Fernando's explanation, which would follow. Also, if the watch is removed from the wrist for any reason, a signal is sent to us immediately and the student is eliminated. It is also possible to steal another student's watch. 
A student who succeeds in stealing a watch will receive additional points equal to the level of the opponent's mana. In a word, it's a survival game, any means of collecting points is acceptable, so be careful since all first that your students of the magic department will be participating. The students were startled and started whispering. Was it a survival game? What should I do? I'm weak, if I get caught by someone like Lou Seltania, won't I just die? It's all luck, on the other hand, if I get a grade E like Isaac, I will be lucky. No, even if you do catch him, his magic power is grade E so you wouldn't receive a lot of extra points. If you caught Lou Seltania, who had grade A plus mana, or Kaya Astrian, who had grade B plus, you will receive an enormous bonus. Then not only would you get into a good class, but you would also earn a lot of gel. Of course, there was no way I would be able to pull something like that off. On the other hand, Ian Fairytale, who had grade E mana, would only net you a small number of points if you caught him. Ian will be targeted by many students because he's grade E, but what about me? I can already see the dark future ahead of me. At least Ian's fighting skills and physical abilities were excellent, so he wouldn't be defeated easily. This was the reason he could hold out until 7 p.m. when the demon appeared. On the other hand, I was as good as doomed. Professor, what if an outsider breaks in during the exam? It's in the forest, so I'm afraid I might meet a strange person, a female student asked Professor Fernando. When all the students enter the forest, a barrier is set. No one will be allowed inside during the test, so don't worry about threats from the outside. That's right, the test was safe from external threats. Except the demon came from within the forest. Besides, once you got eliminated and left the forest, you wouldn't be able to re-enter until after the exam had ended. Afterward, the question what about the bathroom came up, and Professor Fernando simply answered, do it yourself. Then you will enter in numerical order starting from the number one. Student number one entered Delphine Forest and with a bit of time difference between them, all the students started entering as well. Other provisional class students must have entered like this from the other side of the Delphine Forest. Finally, on number 25, I also entered the Delphine Forest. The class placement evaluation began at 2 o'clock p.m. and the demon will appear at 7. 0 p.m. Let's do it. I have to endure for five hours in a survival game with only people stronger than me. Recalling that fact, I held my breath and maintained my tension. Before I knew it, a barrier was drawn around Delphine Forest, and a firecracker exploded in the sky. The class placement evaluation had begun. Chapter 7 Class Placement Evaluation 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Class Placement Evaluation 2. The Class Placement Evaluation In M. Dotrican Academy, there were four classes. A, B, C, and D. The top dot scoring students were assigned to class A, while the lowest dot scoring students were assigned to class D. The results of the mana measurement and the class placement evaluation determined which class a student would be assigned to. As it was a test determining which class you would belong to for the entire semester, the class placement evaluation was of great importance. My top priority was defeating the demons rather than worrying about my ranking. Currently, all the first that your students of the magic department were in Delphine Forest. That meant the risk of meeting other students soon was high, meaning there was a high probability of an immediate battle. This was the ripple effect brought about by the word survival mentioned by the professor. Most students knew that they had to fight when they run into each other. Bang. Roar. Qua. The sound of magic firing and smashing from all directions alerted everyone that the battle royale had begun. In such a situation, it was only natural for students to band together to not only gain a numerical advantage but to also find mana grains more easily, which was the purpose of this test. However, there was no one merciful enough to team up with me, a person with grade E mana. If anything, I would be fortunate as long as they didn't try to take advantage of me. Can I at least rely on Kaya, who has a misunderstanding about my strength? No. 
there were far too many variables to consider. There was no guarantee that Kaya would help me, and there was also a high risk that my true nature would be revealed, as well as the possibility of her stabbing me in the back for being dangerous. If that was the case, I had only one choice. I think, I'll just hide. I saw a tree with thick leaves that looked perfect to hide in, it was the place I decided on after looking around Delphine Forest in advance. I took a magic pouch out of my pocket. Magic pouch, a small pouch that stores many items using magic. Good portability. Rank. Tier 6 rank tier 6. A tier was a unit of measurement for determining the rarity of an item, and the lower the number, the rarer it was. I took a water bottle from my magic pouch and sprayed water on the tree. In addition, I used the ice generation skill to create a crude ice staircase. My elemental synergy was at a rather high level compared to my other stats. The higher the elemental synergy, the greater the effect that would appear when my elemental magic overlapped with another element. Thanks to this, I was able to create a bigger block of ice than when I used the ice generation skill normally. I stepped on the ice staircase and finally climbed up the tree. It's comfy, dot as I sat on a thick branch surrounded by a cluster of leaves, I leaned my back against the tree and defrosted the ice staircase. This was the only strategy that I, the weakest student could use, fucking hold E slash N. From what I understand, fucking hold is a reference to Starcraft's Zerg burrowing mechanics, basically it means to persevere through anything but what would I do if other students completely cleared out all the mana grains while I was hiding in a tree? Okay, so I overlooked something in this class placement evaluation. Mana grains are luminescent. When it gets dark, it becomes easier to distinguish with the naked eye. As someone with low mana perception, it would be better to go looking for the mana grains later anyways. I stayed still and focused on listening to my surroundings, to check if there were any signs of people approaching. Twenty minutes later, I felt a presence. Someone was coming this way. I reached for a frozen slingshot that I had placed out of sight within the tree. Slingshot, an ordinary slingshot made of wood and a rubber band. Weak durability. Rank. Tier 9 The slingshot was fixed by attaching stones to a rubber band and freezing it while stretching the rubber band as far back as it could possibly go. A total of 10 slingshots were installed and I memorized each location. Defrost When I loosened the ice that was holding the slingshot rubber band, it turned into blue powder and scattered while the slingshot fired stones. Wyik, the stone from the slingshot sliced through the air, cut through the grass, and landed on the ground. Ha! Huh. I heard the surprised exclamation of a girl. She moved her gaze to the stone that had flown out from the grass, and appeared to be rather confident in her abilities as she immediately prepared for a fight. There were now nine slingshots left. Let's hold on, the constant tension kept me from getting bored. Please, I only hope that I can hold out until the time is right. Dot. The sky was dyed the color of the sunset. The sound of the students casting magic had long since faded away, and silence descended upon the forest. The current time was 6.30 p.m., and I was still alive, hiding in a tree. Should I sneak down now? Fortunately, the fucking hold strategy worked. I ended up using all ten slingshots, but I didn't see it as a waste since each one performed their role faithfully. After taking out the water bottle from the magic pouch, I poured the remaining water from it on the tree and then used, ice generation, to create ice in a cascading fashion. As expected, it was difficult to control, so a sloppy staircase was created. I carefully climbed down the icy steps. Oh God! It felt like forever since I last put my feet on the ground, and my legs were trembling from sitting in the tree for four hours. It didn't help that I still had muscle pain from the gym yesterday. After massaging my legs, I dispelled my magic to remove the ice staircase. Now I had to get moving. Where are they? I didn't know where Ian and Luce would end up fighting the demon. In the game, you would get a cutscene after surviving the class placement evaluation. 
This was the scene where Ian and Luce first met, and the scenery changed automatically. I needed to find that location quickly. The sky above the barrier was gradually darkening as I moved forward with caution, trying to make as little noise as possible. I have to look for some mana grains. I was robbed of all my fortune in preparation for the class placement evaluation. If I couldn't earn enough gel here, I would have no choice but to starve or take out a loan from a bank and become a debtor. So finding any leftover mana grains was also important. Did I mess up? Ha, damn it, not a single mana grain was visible, the students must have cleared them all out. My hope of easily finding any remaining mana grains after it had become dark was completely shattered. I had overlooked something, this was the prestigious M. Rakan Academy. It was only natural that the students had excellent mana perception. Please, I also need some mana grains, I became so engrossed in searching for mana grains that I had failed to recognize the sound of small footsteps approaching me. Ha! Huh. A woman's voice rang out in front of me and in an instant, my heart sank. I, who had been bending down while searching for mana grains, froze while a drop of cold sweat ran down my cheek. What do I do? What do I do? Let's think. I still had some magic tools I purchased before, if I fought using them, it would be possible to overcome the level difference to some extent. If the person in front of me had a level in the 30s or 40s, wouldn't it be worth trying? I slowly raised my head and looked at the female student standing in front of me. Kaya Estrian, LV. Race. Human elements. Wind. Ice danger. What should I say? Hmm. Wait. Kaya. Ah, ah, how are you? Kaya seemed very frightened, as both her voice and body were trembling. She was the freshman's second seat. It was impossible for me to defeat her, even if I used every trick up my sleeve. However, she currently thought of me as a powerful man who had attained the level of an archwizard but was concealing his power. Let's think and act calmly, if I use that fact to my advantage, I might be able to get out of here safely. Move. I had always been confident in my acting skills. I consequently narrowed my eyes and spoke in a cold, authoritative tone, as if I were revealing my true colors. I acted as if I wasn't nervous at all. Ah. Yes, pardon me. Kaya trembled and moved out of the way. All right, I just had to move on like this. I started walking slowly. A feeling of relief washed over me. I'm glad nothing went wrong. Ah, Sir Isaac. Suddenly, Kaya called me. What is, Sir Isaac? I didn't expect her to use such an embarrassing honorific, but then I thought it was only natural considering what Kaya thought of me. I quickly composed myself. I stopped and looked back at Kaya with a cold expression, and heard. Well, this is still a test so. Why don't we fight? No. Of course, to Sir Isaac, who has reached the level of an archwizard, someone like me would be akin to an ant under the ground. But even then, I still wish to fight you. No, don't do that, relax your determined expression. Please do me this favor, Sir Isaac. No, don't deploy your magic circle, it's not like we already agreed to fight, so get rid of it. Please. In another twenty minutes, the demon will appear, before I knew it, the test clock was pointing at 6.40 p.m. which meant I needed to quickly find where the demon would appear. Despite my pleas, Kaya's light green magic circle deployed in the air was slowly spinning toward me. Even though she was afraid of me, the second seat was burning with a desire to fight against the gigantic existence known as an archwizard. I am weak, I have grade E mana, the lowest grade. I am the weakest student of the Department of Magic. No matter what I do, I can't win. Calm down for now, calm down and think. How could I get out of this situation? What could I tell her in order for her to dispel her magic circle? I couldn't just say that I was the one in charge of the demons. No matter how hard I try, I couldn't even imagine how much of a headache that would become for me in the future. Then what I can do? 
what can I take advantage of, I thought of something. I don't know if this will work, but let's give it a shot. Phew. I started with a sigh. That magic circle looked dangerous, no matter how I looked at it, but I stared at Kaya with the most amused expression I could muster, and similarly, Kaya was looking at me with a dubious expression. Since this has already happened, it was all or nothing. I crossed my arms and looked at the pale green magic circle that Kaya deployed in the air as if it were pathetic. With only that kind of magic. Kaya's eyes widened in shock. What I said must have hurt her feelings. Only that kind. You're wasting your time right now. I turned my back. A terrifying, murderous feeling came from behind. Please don't kill me. I know you are an amazing person. But, what you said just now ignores all the blood, sweat, and tears I've put in, I mean, for now. Ha! Huh. The situation changed quickly. I felt my life fading away. Perhaps Kaya was trying to figure out what I meant. You're close with, Sylphia, right? Sylphia, the Emerald Fairy. It was the name of a fairy who used plant magic. H. How did you know that? Because I can sense the aura of, Yggdrasil, from you. Even though I didn't look at her, I could feel that Kaya was very surprised. The aura of, Yggdrasil. What's that? I was just bluffing. How could I sense that when I couldn't even sense mana grains? Anyway, Kaya was on good terms with Sylphia, the Emerald Fairy. It was a secret that only she knew, and couldn't be found out by anyone else. She also wore the seed of Yggdrasil, she received from Sylphia as a necklace around her neck. Kaya had to keep the seed with her at all times in order to access its plant mana. At first glance, it appeared to be a regular seed, but unlike a regular seed, it was constantly condensing mana rather than emitting it, making it difficult to detect. After entering her second year, she became fully attuned to the plant mana. Later on, she was able to use the Seed of Yggdrasil as a catalyst to cast the 8. Star Plant spell, Yggdrasil, which contained both a fairy's power and the capability to destroy a nation. Only I, who was familiar with the future, could say this now. It seems to be quite recognizable. Did you know Sylphia? Of course not. But I didn't answer on purpose and kept my eyes closed, pretending to reminisce about a great past. Your true value will be revealed in the future. When that happens, if you become someone worth my time, I'll face you one day. After that, I started walking again. I didn't know what kind of expression Kaya was making behind me, and I didn't know what thoughts were racing through her mind. It didn't matter. What really mattered was the little noise caused by the magic circle subsided and then disappeared. Kaya had dispersed her magic circle. A smile leaked out from the corners of my mouth. It was relief at being alive. I was bluffing like a middle schooler, but I was glad things worked out anyway. Sir Isaac. Oh, not again, why, why? I tried to pretend I hadn't heard, but Kaya called out once more, Sir Isaac and forced me to a halt. Why are you here, pretending to be weak, dot? Certainly, that was a question worth asking. Even though, I was really just weak. But in Kaya's eyes, I was pretending to be a weakling. Well, that's easy. There was only one response I could give here. You don't need to know. That was it. In this situation, the typical response from the other person would be to just remain silent and nod. And then, I started walking again. As expected, Kaya didn't call out to me again. After walking for a while, when I looked back, she was out of sight. Wee wee, I let out a very, very deep sigh of relief. Kia, I'm alive. I'm not dead. I was lucky. Hmm, it's really awesome. But now was not the time to be immersed in the joy of survival. I calmed down and steeled myself. I needed to find the place where the demon would appear, as well as where Ian and Luce would meet. Where are you? Where? I found a mana grain. Let's pick it up. 
When I brought my watch near it, the mana grain flew off the stone like a firefly and stuck itself to the watch. There are only ten minutes left. It was currently 6.50 p.m., meaning the demon would appear in ten minutes. I retraced my steps. The only clue I had was that the demon would appear in an empty lot with a low cliff. I looked around Delphine Forest yesterday, but I couldn't find an area that matched that description due to the forest being so large. I had to find it. It will most likely be difficult to find it in time. If so, I arrived at a stream that I had memorized the location of during my preliminary search. I could see the sky clearly from here, no matter how dense the trees were in the Delphine Forest. Then I took a look at my wristwatch. 7 o'clock, a dark blue hue dyed the sky as the sunset faded. By now, the demon should have appeared in front of Ian and Luce. It would be a waste of time to wander around here. Let's put the search for mana grains aside for a moment. My number one priority is to avoid a bad ending. I decided to stay where I was. Certainly, when Ian and Luce begin to fight the demon, there would be a significant scale of magic involved. I just needed to head to the location where the spells were being cast. It was entirely possible for me to move further away from the fight if I were to continue wandering around. Let's wait a little bit. Just a little bit. In the forest, which was gradually turning dark, I stood still and held my breath. Koo. A roar erupted. I jerked my head in the direction of the roar. Since I was near a stream, there were no trees blocking my view, making the loud noise easily identifiable. A sharp pillar of ice rose a short distance away. The pillar was pitch black rather than the cool blue normal ice would have. Others may have been unaware, but I was certain that an ice spell with the darkness element had been cast. It was, without a doubt, the magic of demons. The ice pillar instantly disintegrated into black powder and disappeared. I hurried towards the location where the black ice pillar had risen. Please hold on until I arrive, Ian. It would be even better if you win. Whoa. Where are you going in such a hurry? No, no. Ugh. What is it, huh? Aren't you a lowly commoner with grade E mana? Tristan Humphrey, LV. Race. Human elements. Wind danger. Medium the person who stood in my way was Tristan Humphrey, a high dot ranking freshman, and a conceited blonde aristocrat. I shook my head rapidly. Thanks to playing dot magic knight of M. Ken. So much, I kept all the characteristics of the main characters in my head. My level was 26, the level difference between me and this guy was 45, but. If I did my best, I think I could beat him. I wasn't sure about others, though. Let's take him down quickly. I'll be passing through now. I accelerated the flow of mana in my body, warming up my ice mana. Footnotes Chapter 8 Class Placement Evaluation 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Class Placement Evaluation 3 You managed to survive this far, Grade E Commoner, oh, it seems there's a mana grain on your watch. Only one. Ho ho, were you so desperate to survive that you hid the entire time? That's quite intuitive. And on top of that, your mana perception must be atrocious. How pitiful. Isn't it a cowardly move to hit me with facts? Well, even though he looked like an asshole, it was an obvious fact that he was far superior to me in terms of skill. If I fight him head dot to dot head with magic, I would lose 100 out of 100 times. But I needed to get past him somehow. I didn't know what was going on with Ian right now, maybe the worst dot case scenario had already happened. I couldn't let myself have a bad ending because of him. I secretly inserted one of my fingers into the magic pouch in my back pocket, and a magic tool in the form of a small glass bottle was caught by my finger. As I saw during the magic power evaluation, Tristan Humphrey's magic was quite powerful, but he was inexperienced in defending himself since he solely focused on attacking rather than defending. 
He disliked the combat style that involved carefully deploying defensive magic while fighting. He was a man who had only mastered attack magic with the mindset of, the best defense is a good offense. It was a mindset born out of the lack of practical experience. The servants of the Humphrey family supported and raised him without giving him any hands dot on experience. In fact, this class placement evaluation was probably his debut stage. You aren't even trying to run away when I'm in front of you. You're just a grade E commoner, where does such unfounded confidence even come from? Or, are you petrified from fear? Ha ha ha, Tristan laughed heartily before coughing and gasping due to swallowing his saliva incorrectly. Maybe it was because I had been playing that magic night of M. Or Ken. For a long time, but even Tristan's third dot rate villain lines felt familiar. Still, I had to knock him down and get past him. Because I know him well. It's possible. I threw the small glass bottle in my hand to the ground. Clink. The small glass bottle collided with a stone and broke, releasing the hazy mist that had condensed in it. So, ooh, processed fog, when the bottle is shattered, it instantly generates a dense fog of the water element. The effect lasts for 20 seconds. Rank. Tier 7, Fog. The magic tool I broke was a water element item, processed fog. It created a hazy fog around itself in an instant, similar to a smoke bomb. However, this was insufficient, as Tristan and I could still see one another's movements if we looked closely. I stretched out my right hand and spread pure white, cold air. Cold divergence, ice element, one, the dense fog immediately turned colder, and even whiter. As the air cooled, condensation occurred and formed advection fog, becoming denser and thicker. I channeled ice mana with my other hand. Ian and Luce must have joined forces by now. They should be headed toward the place where they fought the demon. At that time. Hush. A sharp, light green wind sliced through the dense fog and grazed me with only a few inches to spare. Wind sword, wind element, free, I froze on the spot. I was almost done for. Ha, huh, is there nothing you can do other than play jokes like this? As Tristan approached me, he conjured a magic circle in front of his hand, scattering a pale green light. Whoosh! The wind began to blow in all directions, clearing the fog. The wind was caused by Tristan. Wind generation, wind element, one, the wind element was distinguished by a combo that continuously generated wind, consequently increasing the magic output. In other words, he intended to hunt me down in earnest. I already knew this was the outcome. However, as the fog cleared, I reached out my hand towards Tristan. I had already begun forming ice from the moment the fog spread. Dot then I clenched my fist, my palm glowing with a blue light. The flow of mana was severed by me, causing the large chunk of ice that had formed over Tristan's head to rapidly fall to the ground. Ice generation, ice element, one, huh. Crack. A heavy noise echoed eerily throughout the forest as the block of ice, pulled down by gravity, fell directly on Tristan's head. Ugh. With a single blood dot curdling shriek, Tristan collapsed. The block of ice that struck him was bigger than what I usually made, thanks to elemental synergy and the water element from the processed fog. Soon, Tristan's wind died down and the fog dissipated. I could clearly see Tristan lying on the floor, with blood dripping from his head. Having suffered a humiliating defeat from a grade E commoner that he had ignored for so long, he might as well start practicing defensive magic from now on. Time is running out, I looked at my watch and reminded myself of the urgent situation. As much as I wanted Tristan's watch to earn points, it wasn't worth the time I would have to spend taking it away. I made up my mind and started running toward my destination once again. The trigger for this bad ending wasn't Ian's death. It was actually when Luz summoned her familiar to defeat the demon. Her familiar was the eight-dot-star magic beast, Thunderbird, Galia. As with magic, the highest grade for familiars was nine-dot-stars, which was on the level of world destruction. 
and Gallia was the strongest familiar of the grade just below that, national destruction. The problem was that she couldn't control Gallia. Originally, a magic beast who became a familiar must faithfully follow their master's every word, but Gallia could not be controlled, lightly disregarded her orders, and even went as far as willingly accepting the penalty for disobeying said orders. If Gallia manifested here, all of the talented students who had survived so far during the class placement evaluation would perish. Currently, there were only first-year students from the magic department in the forest, and Gallia's lightning strike would engulf the forest before the academy could respond. It was no surprise that the protagonist who was still trapped in the forest, Ian, would die. Gallia was one of the greatest powers in M. Rican Academy, after all. The situation eventually settled down after Dorothy Hartnova, a sophomore in the magic department called the Star Witch, managed to repel the Thunderbird, Gallia. However, many people, including Ian, had already died. In other words, it was a bad ending. Please don't be too late. Even though I was out of breath, I ran with all my might. How dare you, wound this body. Tristan reached out in the direction Isaac had left. There was dirt covering his entire body as he was collapsed on the ground, blood pouring from his head. In front of his hand, a light green magic circle was conjured and slowly started to rotate. If he continued to pour his mana into the magic circle and fired the long dot range attack magic, whirlwind, it might have even reached Isaac. To the hands of a lowly grade E commoner, an insignificant grade E commoner. Tristan struggled to resist the urge to lose consciousness and poured his mana toward the departed Isaac. Whirlwind, wind element, for, whoosh. A light green wind began to whirl and swirl with strong momentum. But. Whoosh. The whirlwind, which was about to crush the trees and move towards Isaac, was devoured by a more powerful whirlwind coming from the side. Tristan's eyes widened. A female student who blew a much stronger, whirlwind, against his, whirlwind, walked out from the darkness of the forest. Her light green pigtails fluttered along with her footsteps, and her jade. Colored eyes were brilliantly vibrant even in the slowly darkening forest. It was Kaya Astrian, the second seat freshman in the magic department. Uh, why are you? As if not interested in Tristan's question, Kaya quietly closed her eyes. Ha. She took a deep breath and began to ponder. He's weak. So weak, that he wasn't even worthy of Sir Isaac's sincerity. Isaac had sensed the mana contained in Yggdrasil's seed. Even though she was always carrying the seed with her, she couldn't even sense the mana. The ability to sense mana that wasn't being emitted was famous for being in the realm of an archwizard. Isaac had proven once again that he was someone whose skill couldn't be surpassed by someone like herself. Sir Isaac is amazing. Only that kind of power. It was only natural he said that. She must have seemed so insignificant to such an amazing person. If she wanted to compete with Isaac and his natural talent, it was only polite to at least meet a certain threshold. Rather, challenging him with her mediocre skills was equivalent to disrespecting him. It was akin to a young child challenging an adult knight to a fight, of course, the knight would say. Come back once you've grown up. I'm going to be strong enough to make Sir Isaac recognize me. Kaya slowly opened her eyes as her resolve burned quietly like embers. Why, did you cover for that grade E commoner? Tristan asked in a trembling voice as if he didn't know why. It's only natural I do so, that's why. Kaya replied with a sigh mixed with a pitiful voice. Hushush the wind generated by Kaya started swirling around her. Kaya's, wind generation, had a stronger mana concentration than Tristan's, wind generation, and was thus stronger. Her light green pigtails and the hem of her school uniform began to flutter wildly. A face covered in the darkness of the forest, eyes looking down with displeasure. Tristan looked at her with a face full of doubts and fear. Tristan wondered, why was she protecting Isaac and fighting him? Even I have never touched Isaac, what makes someone like you think you can? It was a simple matter of pride. 
The wind around Kaya swirled violently and soon, Tristan's body floated above the twilight forest. The twilight of the evening sky was truly beautiful, with that feeling, his consciousness faded far beyond the distant horizon. Meanwhile, dried dirt covered Luceltania's rose. Gold hair and the school uniform she was wearing. She calmed herself in front of the bizarre. Looking demon whose appearance was akin to a man wearing loose. Fitting in navy blue clothes, it was standing before her as if it were a statue. He had gray skin and a lean, muscular body. Both of his eyes were tightly shut with one hand under his chin, and his head slightly bowed. He appeared to be contemplating something. Hmm, 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 HHM, 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 hmm, the constant buzzing that resonated in Luce's head had started a while ago. Ian Fairytale, who fought this strange demon with her, had already lost his consciousness. Please die. Luce lightly waved her arm and poured out her mana. Then, a magic circle that was glowing blue formed under the demon's feet, and hot water quickly gushed out into the sky. Geyser, water element, for, Paiu. The sight of the demon gracefully avoiding Luce's magic did not match his stiff appearance. Even during the evasive action, he still looked like he was in deep contemplation. The hot fountain soared powerfully, as if it would pierce the sky itself. Luce knew how the demon would avoid it, and deliberately adjusted the angle. She directed the demon's escape path and activated her magic there as well. Seawater prison, water element, for, in an instant, a round dome made of water appeared and imprisoned the demon. The seawater prison quickly froze over. Cracking, hmm, 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 hmm. The demon casually smashed the frozen, seawater prison, and escaped. My water magic alone isn't enough, Luce monologued in a voice as serene as the moonlight. Ice magic, enough to instantly freeze the, seawater prison, and neutralize it. It was proof that the demon's ice magic proficiency and, elemental synergy, were extremely high. That demon was too strong for Luce to handle with water magic alone. <laughs> Suddenly, the demon began humming loudly. A large, light blue magic circle formed behind him, with elegant ice crystals floating around it. Alarm bells were going off in Luce's head, telling her that this was dangerous, he suddenly took a step forward. The ground began to freeze from the tips of his toes. Karaawea. The cold air rose like a blizzard, quickly spreading along the ground in the shape of a fan, the areas where the cold air passed through froze, becoming smooth sheets of ice. Frost wave, ice element, 6, Luce hurriedly deployed a, water wall, a water element defense spell, around herself. A circular water barrier formed and shielded her from the cold wind. Water wall, water element, 4, ugh. A powerful surge of cold air attempted to freeze the water barrier that surrounded Luce. She countered the cooling by squeezing out her mana, accelerating the flow of water that formed the water wall. The cold air rushed past the water wall and transformed the forest behind it into an ice.age landscape. The frost wave eventually lost momentum and calmed down. Luce let out a white breath in the cold air as she released the water wall. She inhaled deeply and scanned the demon with eyes that reflected the blue ocean. Her water elemental magic wasn't enough to defeat that demon on its own. Her most powerful elemental magic was lightning, and she was certain that she would win even against unfavorable odds. But, in order to use lightning magic properly, she would have no choice but to summon something that should never be called upon. One dot half of her mana was always used to keep that guy at bay. Luce rolled up the sleeves of her school uniform and looked down at the magic circle engraved on her left wrist. If I summon that guy, I can definitely defeat this stupid gray dot skin demon. But that guy is a double dot edged sword, and I'm not sure if I can control him yet. However, she had become much stronger to the extent that she entered the prestigious M. Rakan Academy's magic department at the top of her class. 
even her mana was rated A+. Galia, she thought that she might be able to control him now. Ha! Her heart throbbed, but after taking a deep breath and calming her tense emotions, Luce finally made up her mind. The eight-dot-star magic beast, Thunderbird, Galia. Let's summon that guy. Just then, when Luce tried chanting the summoning spell with her index and middle fingers pointing at the magic circle engraved on her wrist, thud. She heard the sound of footsteps. Although it might have been an illusion, it seemed to have been made with the intention of being heard. Luce turned her head towards the sound. On the surrounding low cliffs, a man stood in a navy blue hooded coat. His entire body was toned, and he appeared to be at least two meters tall. The inside of the haggard hood revealed fierce, blood-dot-red eyes, and just below that was a large, grotesque mouth. The mouth had its gums exposed with large, sharp teeth neatly aligning them, the jutting canines and large molars were especially terrifying. Because of the worn dot down hood, it was difficult to tell, but he seemed to have pitched dot black skin. Jarrarrarrar, it was like a beast, a magic beast. She never thought another dangerous dot looking monster would emerge from here. Now she really had no choice but to summon the Thunderbird, Galia. Something was off. The monster standing on the cliff's eyes were not on loose, but on the grey dot skin demon. The demon also stopped his contemplative pose and stared at the monster with both eyes raised, it was clearly on guard. For some reason, the atmosphere seemed like the monsters were trying to fight. Dot. I think I bought the wrong clothes. I didn't have a choice in the matter, however, as I just bought the one that the owner of the secret shop said they had left, but it turned out to be Magic Cloak of Disguise, Berserker. I was now dressed in a navy blue hooded coat with the hood pulled down. My face was full of sharp teeth, large fangs, and molars neatly aligned in the corners of my mouth, it was possible because it was magic camouflage. From my perspective I looked normal, but to others I would appear as a big monster standing on the cliff's edge. I looked to and from Luce and the demon, but Luce's expression was unusual. Well. It was a reasonable reaction considering my current appearance. But Ian is passed out again. Ian was leaning against a tree, seemingly unconscious. This made it clear that I couldn't trust Ian in this game. Moreover, Luce appeared to be on the verge of summoning Thunderbird, Galia. If I was even a little later, I would have been in big trouble. That's a relief, Jarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
one, an icy chill surged through my entire body, enveloping me in cold air, and enhanced my ice magic output. It was a level of mastery that the ordinary Isaac could never even hope to achieve, but with the current me, it was possible. Hmm, the demon, Pernicus the Contemplative, exuded a strong sense of vigilance as he poured out his magic and created a black, ice spear, in the air. Ice spear, ice element, 4, plus black ice, ice element, 5, equals black ice spear, ice element, a huge, ice spear, menacingly ripped through the air and targeted me. Despite its incredible speed, avoiding it was child's play. The, ice spear, had a limited attack range. Its main purpose was to be hurled at enemies to pierce them with its tip, which was best used for huge magic beasts. However, Pernicus used, ice spear, against humans. If I avoided the, ice spear, he would use a tactic that involved blowing up the darkness mana that he already infused his, ice spear, with in advance, which would blast ice shards in every direction. It was an incredibly difficult attack pattern to avoid. But, the current me. I'm a demon, limited hunter. I could just parry that, ice spear. I spread my palms and poured out my mana generously. Because my skill tree increased to plus 10, I was able to use magic that I couldn't normally use. I swung my arm, and then. Tutu 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 tutu. Following the movement of my hand, a massive, ice wall, spread out. Ice wall, ice element, 4, Kang. The, ice spear, couldn't pierce through the solid, ice wall. After hearing the two spells collide, I immediately jumped off the cliff. Whoosh. Whoa. Guwok. My body leaped like a ball, and I felt like I was floating in the air for a while. It's exciting. This dizzying feeling is as if I were bungee jumping. As adrenaline and dopamine rushed through my body, the feeling of excitement surged. I dispelled the ice wall, causing the gigantic wall of ice to instantly disintegrate into a powder that scattered into blue light. The sight of the blue light engulfing my surroundings was spectacular. In the midst of that light, I went flying toward Pernicus. Hmm, just from his expression alone, one could see how flustered Pernicus was. He hastily attempted to use his magic, but it was too late. As I soared towards him, I poured ice mana into my right hand. A blue magic circle appeared in front of my palm, and mana condensed as I reached out my hand in Pernicus' direction. When I finally reached the enemy, the mana fully condensed before erupting into a magnificent explosion. Frost explosion, ice element, five qua. Ice exploded in all directions, releasing an onslaught of ice upon the demon. A misty cold air was rampant as the explosive flood of ice engulfed Pernicus. The enormous block of ice created by the ice explosion initially appeared to cover the Delphine forest before rising off the ground and extending diagonally toward the sky. I landed softly on the ground and rose. Phew. Grun, my sigh became a cold chill that permeated the air. I lowered my hand and turned to face Pernicus, who was trapped in the ice block, seemingly in pain. Slowly, I clenched my right hand. Crack. Quadjajack. Then, the huge block of ice shattered and dissipated into a beautiful blue powder, before scattering into shards as Pernicus fell to the floor, coughing up blood. Who, Yuam, with the expression of a failed philosopher who couldn't find the answer he desperately sought, no matter how much he repeated his thoughts. Pernicus turned to ashes and scattered away in the wind. It was over. I succeeded in preventing a bad ending. I felt such a strong wave of relief that made my entire body shiver. I'm glad. All of a sudden, a system window appeared before my eyes. Congratulations. You have defeated the demon, Pernicus the Contemplative, LV-105, and gained EXP. Level up. Your level has increased to 30. You have gained an additional 8 bonus stat points. This time, there wasn't any special achievement, but there was one other thing that more than made up for it. A black, finger-dot-sized, spherical jewel had fallen where Pernicus turned to ash and vanished. 
It was the reward for defeating Pernicus. I picked it up and put it in my pocket. You have obtained the loot, Remnant of Darkness, dot. Remnant of Darkness, it imbues the user's basic elemental magic with dark mana, granting the ability to learn a new elemental magic. Rank. Tier 1 The Remnant of Darkness is mine now. The main character. Ian Fairytale, LV. Race. Human Elements. Light, Fire Danger. Why would such a pathetic bastard need something like this? Anyways, his level increased significantly since the last time I saw him at the entrance ceremony. At the time, he was only level 32. Being the main character, his growth rate was ridiculously fast. He chose fire as an element other than light. I was glad we had no overlap. No wait, if my second element was fire, there would be an overlap. I could only hope that my second element wasn't fire. After obtaining Hilda's frost scythe, I would need to acquire the final weapon of the second element that I would acquire later, so it was better if it didn't overlap with Ian. Ah, now my body is getting heavy. It seems that I returned to my normal state. It was as if I had been wearing sandbags all my life, and then took them off for a moment of freedom before ultimately putting them on again. Status, Name Isaac L.V. Gender Male Year First Title Freshman Mana 260-350, Mana Recovery Speed, D, Stamina, D, Strength, D+, Intelligence, D+, Willpower, B, Potential. Details. Combat Skills, Elemental Series 1 Ice, Elemental Firepower, D+, Elemental Efficiency, D+, Elemental Synergy, C, Elemental Series 2, Locked, it seemed my skills had returned to normal. No, my total mana increased by 10 points, and, Elemental Firepower, increased from D to D+. Apparently, my stats had improved while dealing with Tristan Humphrey and, Pernicus the Contemplative. It was a small increase, but it still felt great. What are you? Ha! Huh. Grung. I forgot Luce was here too. She was glaring at me with a wary face. Are you a monster? I was sure I looked like a dangerous monster right now, but she still calmly asked about my identity. No matter what answer I gave, she would only hear, Grung or Gowok. It was in my best interest to quickly run away. Now that the big event was over, I needed to collect more mana grains. I was going to collect as many mana grains as possible, until the end of this class placement evaluation. Fortunately, I didn't have to be concerned about being looked at suspiciously even though a grade E student like myself made it through the lengthy class placement evaluation, since it was a secret who survived and how they survived. Unless someone like Tristan bragged about it. Luckily, he had a lot of pride, so he wouldn't go around bragging about how he got beat up by me. I turned my back on Luce and started running away. Wait a minute. Water generation, water element, one, whoa. Go walk. Splash. Tuck a column of water shot up at my feet. I was startled and stumbled backwards. It was Luce's magic. I never thought that she would try to bind my feet. Name. What is your name? Why are you asking a grunting monster for his name? Grung. Grung. It was going to sound like Grung or Guwak anyway, so I just answered with a cry. Then I started moving my feet again. Fortunately, Luce didn't try to stop me anymore. Grung. For some reason, Luce kept repeating the sound of my cry to herself. I ignored it and continued to run through the darkness of the forest. I had to get out of here and search for mana grains. After running quite a distance from Luce, I removed my cloak of disguise. Now, if I put this cloak of disguise into the magic pouch, it was like destroying the evidence. Every time I see this large piece of clothing fit into a small pocket, I get amazed. They say it's a storage spell, but I don't know the principle behind it. Anyways, the magic pouch is a really convenient item. Where did it go? 
where did the magic pouch go? It wasn't there. No matter where I looked, there was no magic pouch. I looked back at my memories, I was sure. Before I ran away from Luce, I heard a tuck sound when she used her water generation spell. Was it then? Ah, uh, I have to go back. Darkness filled the sky, and the place where I briefly stopped because of Luce's magic was also very dark. That was why I probably didn't notice the magic pouch falling. How do I go back and pick it up? Is Luce still there? If she is, would it be better to go back in while disguised and pick up the pouch? No, it would be unnatural for a monster that had fled after defeating a demon to suddenly return and retrieve something. Luce would undoubtedly find it strange. Besides, I wondered if she would let me go. It was over the moment she caught me. There was no way I could resist her interrogation. It would only be a matter of time before she realized that the clothes I was wearing were a magic cloak of disguise. If that was the case, it was a bit of a risky gamble. I had no choice but to go as Isaac and pick it up naturally. Falling down pretending to be surprised, sneaking back, secretly picking up the magic pouch, and running away. According to my memory, Luce didn't touch Ian. This was because she had already accumulated enough points, and her head was filled with thoughts about the demon. Besides, she was a person who had no interest in other people. She didn't even know who the student with grade E mana was, and didn't even try to find out until the story of Dot Magic Knight of M. Ken was over. She wouldn't have any doubts about the fact that I, a grade E, was still alive. In other words, it was worth betting that she didn't care about weaklings like me. I hid the cloak of disguise in a pile of grass and headed back to the place where I had fought Pernicus. Dot. Luce required some time to collect her thoughts. The monster that just left was strong enough to crush the demon, who Luce struggled against, with one strike. Common sense told her she shouldn't be caught or chased by a monster that strong. If the madness and hostility he exuded had been directed at her, it would have led to irreversible and disastrous consequences. Yet, Luce mustered the courage to stop the monster just once. It was because she wanted to ask for its name. For a moment, she regretted doing such a foolish thing. Anxiety swept over her at the thought of fighting the monster. But the monster quietly left. It was a relief. Grung, Luce recalled his answer. Grung. It was called Grung. Of course, she knew it was just a cry. However, not knowing what to properly call it, she decided to call it Grung. What is its true identity? Luce posed a question. It was still impossible to know at this point. She then heard the rustling of grass. It came from the direction that the monster had left in. Could it be that, Grung, had returned? Luce took a quick look at the direction of the noise. Crap. It wasn't. It was an ordinary male student. A man with red eyes and silver hair tinged with a bluish glow under the moonlight. As soon as he saw Luce, he fell down on his butt in surprise. Luce couldn't hide her disappointment. She had already earned enough points because no one could match her. That man was surely nobody important. Besides, her head was full of thoughts about the demon and Grung. She didn't have time to worry about a frail dot looking guy. 2. Top. It's noisy, don't make a fuss and just go. Luce frowned. Did he notice her frowning expression? The student with blue dot silver hair crept back with a terrified face as if he had seen a ghost. Then, he quickly got up and started running. Luce looked at Ian, who was still unconscious. He looked like he would be fine, so she walked away, leaving Ian unattended. Footnotes Chapter 10 Class Placement Evaluation Interlude You are listening at NovelFull.audio Class Placement Evaluation Interlude The Class Placement Evaluation was over. However, the results were less than desirable. I survived for five hours while being the weakest and managed to defeat the demon, but despite all that I only collected two mana grains. 
Since each mana grain was worth 10 points, I ended the exam with a total of 20 points. Regardless of the loophole that the mana grains could be seen better at night, the students here had excellent mana perception. As such, they collected most if not all of the mana grains. Besides, there wasn't enough time. Right after defeating, Pernicus the Contemplative, there were barely even 20 minutes remaining. In addition to that, I returned to the scene where I had defeated the demon, pretended to be surprised in front of Luce with acting comparable to that of famous actors, secretly picked up the magic pouch, and returned with only about 10 minutes left. I had only 10 minutes to search for the remaining mana grains. Gel was earned according to the class placement evaluation points. In other words, I would only earn 20 gels. If I bought two loaves of bread, I would run out of gels. I'm at a loss. When I returned to my dormitory, I stretched out in frustration, and got up again, then went out to exercise. It wasn't the time to struggle. It wasn't the time to get frustrated because I earned less gels. I had to be strong. Strong enough to defeat the final boss, the evil god Nephit. Ugh. My entire body ached, as expected. Muscle pain was no laughing matter. It seemed almost unreasonable how bad it truly was. When I went to the gym for a few days, the students from the night department greeted me and gave me a series of hellish PTs. On top of that, I was already tired from the class placement evaluation. Still, I couldn't put off training. Today, I had to focus on magic training, since I wanted to relive the magic perception I had used when dealing with Pernicus the Contemplative, as soon as possible. Since the class placement evaluation was held today, most of the first years would either be resting or completely exhausted. Meaning, I could monopolize the training grounds. A full moon was hanging in the night sky. I ignored the corner of the garden where I had been practicing magic for a week, and went to the training ground for the magic department's first years. As I entered the domed building, a view of the empty training ground greeted me. The ceiling lit up with luminescent magic as I turned on the light. The silence was awkward for me, since this was always a place where high-dot-spirited students trained their magic while sweating profusely. I was ignored because I was a commoner with grade E mana, so I couldn't use the training ground to my heart's content. If I got caught in a bad fight, I would suffer both mentally and physically. So, except for the first day of measuring mana, today was the first time I had ever used the training ground. Spacious. Special facilities comprising various elements were installed. Lakes, fireplaces, rocks, icebergs, and so forth. The area where those facilities were installed served as a training ground for elemental efficiency and elemental synergy. There was also a training area where I could hit targets with different elements, and just next door, I could fight illusions of monsters. Let's do it, I slapped my cheeks to drive away the fatigue. It's not time to rest yet, hang in there. Let's start by distributing my stat points. Potential, stat points. 8. Growth rate, physical training efficiency, C. 26 out of 100, up, magic training efficiency, C. 27 out of 100, up, learning efficiency, D. 12 out of 100, up. Elemental resistance, fire resistance, E. 0 out of 100, up, water resistance, D. 6 out of 100, up, ice resistance, C. 24 100, up, lightning resistance, C. 29 out of 100, up, rock resistance, E. 2 out of 100, up, wind resistance, D. 13 out of 100, up, neutral magic resistance, D. 8 out of 100, up. Versus race combat power, versus human combat power, E. 4 out of 100, up, versus. Other races combat power, E. 1 out of 100, up, versus heavenly beings combat power, E. 0 out of 100, up, versus demon combat power, S. 100 out of 100, max, I invested all 8 stats points into, magic training efficiency. 
potential, magic training efficiency, has increased from C to C plus dot. C plus grade. Certainly, my growth rate would rise, but I remembered that the noticeable change occurred from the B plus grade. B plus grade was the area of genius. As I waved my hand, the status window disappeared. Now, let's review the magic I used against Pernicus. First and foremost, I wanted to learn the 5. Dot star magic, Frost Explosion, as quickly as possible. Frost Explosion was an extremely versatile and powerful offensive magic. It would become a kind of ultimate skill for me once I got used to it. However, in the game, 5. Dot star magic can only be mastered by the second year. Students like Luz and Kaya, who could easily use 5. Dot star magic since the first year, were exceptionally talented. Anyways, my short dot term goal was to master Frost Explosion to an amateur level at least before the PvP performance evaluation. It would be a good opportunity to evaluate my fighting ability as Ordinary Isaac. The enemies I would fight in the future wouldn't be limited to demons, which meant I couldn't solely rely on my unique trait, Hunter. It was even the end dot of dot semester evaluation not long after the PvP performance evaluation. Since there was a part where Luce is familiar, the level 175 Thunderbird Galia appeared, I would easily die if things went wrong. Therefore, it was necessary to increase the number of skills available when the Hunter trait was triggered. But who am I going to fight against in the PvP match? During the PvP performance evaluation, the main character, Ian Fairytale, was paired up with Luce. Now, were the matched opponents decided on luck? Of course they weren't. Ian was just being a brat. Then what about me? Isaac's bout wasn't depicted in the game, meaning this was uncharted territory. At least until then, I wanted to learn a few decent skills besides, Frost Explosion. I stood upright and pressed the fingers of both hands together, creating a gap between my palms and channeling my mana flow through it at maximum output. Because, Frost Explosion, was a spell that poured mana all at once and explodes, this was the most efficient stance. In the space between my palms, the cold blue ice mana started condensing. Release it all at once and explode. I extended my hand and released a burst of the condensed blue mana. Pat, ah. The mana scattered helplessly. It sounded like a deflated balloon. When dealing with demons, I could easily use Frost Explosion due to the influence of Skill Tree plus 10, but now, even trying it didn't work properly. Who zero, one more time. Pat, eh. Beads of sweat dripped down from the attempt itself. It was difficult to finally control the mana especially since the amount I had was insufficient to begin with. If it felt like I was pouring out mana against the demon, it now felt like I'm spilling mana. When you take a shower, the water pressure is weak, and there is only one hole to pour out the water, so it ends up feeling small. I opened my status window. I wanted to check the acquisition conditions of Frost Explosion once again. Pat, own skills, active, 1, Ice Generation, D+, 2, Ice Curtain, C+, 1, Cold Divergence, C+, 1, Basic Protection Magic, D, Passive, None Skill Tree. Details. I clicked, Skill Tree. Details, at the bottom. I pressed the first of the two elements, the, Ice, element. The second element had not yet been opened, so the second skill tree was still locked. By the way, there was also a third menu, Neutral, which included things like, Basic Protection Magic. I checked the ice skills displayed in the, Ice, section. The skills I could use were etched in bright letters. Ice Generation, Ice Curtain, and, Cold Divergence. In the middle of a skill tree with circuit dot-like branches extending downwards, the words, Frost Explosion, were engraved. Unlike the bright letters of other skills, the color of Frost Explosion was dark, meaning it was a skill I had yet to master. When I pressed Frost Explosion with my finger, a new system window appeared. Frost Explosion 5, 
condenses and releases a large amount of ice mana, causing explosive freezing and dealing powerful damage to enemies. Type Active Skill, Offensive, Elements Ice Acquisition Conditions LV50, Dot Ice Generation, Grade B, Dot Cold Divergence, Grade B, Dot Ice Elemental Firepower, Grade C+, Dot Ice Elemental Efficiency, Grade C+, Dot Trigger Conditions None I hadn't met any of the conditions. As expected, ultimate skills aren't always easy to obtain. I waved my hand and the status window disappeared. There was still time, so I had no choice but to train harder and become stronger. Ice Generation I released my mana toward the large rock prepared in the training ground. Ice Generation, Ice Element, 1, Cracking, if I used, Ice Generation, Raw, I could only create ice the size of a soccer ball. But if I used it on something like a rock, it was possible to freeze it by expanding it. The surface of the rock was completely covered by the ice that I had created. But as expected, it was thin. Oh right. Now that I thought of it, there was loot. I took out the remnant of darkness I had put in my pocket. I infused the remnant of darkness, which looked like black pearls, with ice mana. Suddenly, the remnant of darkness began to radiate a black light, which condensed into dark mana and flowed in my body. It felt as if cold and dreary mana were merging in my body. Suddenly, a new sensation arose, and a system window appeared in the air. The aura of the loot, remnant of darkness, permeates you, congratulations. You have learned the unique skill, black ice, dot. Black ice, 5, creates black ice. Type. Active skill, all, purpose, elements. Ice, derived from darkness, acquisition conditions. Apply, ice mana to, remnant of darkness, O, oh, trigger conditions. None black ice. It was the same skill as, ice generation, but the firepower and strength were on a whole other level. I felt like I knew how to use the black ice as if it was natural, the sensation instinctual, just like breathing. I reached for the rock and dispelled the ice. The ice then turned into a blue powder before scattering into nothingness, and the rock regained its original form. After that, I activated the new skill created by mixing ice mana and dark mana. Black ice. Black ice, ice element, 5, crackling. Oh. The rock was instantly covered with black ice. It was much tougher than the, ice generation, that I just used, and the momentum of freezing things was much faster. The black ice covering the rock surface appeared to be five times thicker than when, ice generation, was used. In addition, the ice was glowing black, making it difficult to tell if there even was a rock inside. I can use it to block my opponent's vision. I then extended my hand upward and activated, black ice, with maximum output toward the ceiling. Tsar. Ah. Uh, oh. A large amount of mana disappeared in an instant, leaving my body with little to no strength. I felt like I would collapse at any moment from the depletion of mana. But when I saw the ice in the air, I couldn't help but be filled with joy. So big. It wasn't the size of a soccer ball, it was nearly the size of a car. At that moment, a system window appeared in front of my eyes. The elemental firepower of the ice element has increased from D plus to C. The elemental efficiency of the ice element has increased from D plus to C. It must have been because my magic training efficiency increased and I had used black ice for the first time. Immediately, elemental firepower and elemental efficiency went up by one level. Good, good. Ah, disperse, disperse. I quickly dispelled black ice before dropping the black ice block. The block of black ice turned into a glowing black powder and flew into the air before disappearing. I almost collapsed for a while. How much mana do I have left? Mana. 10 350, mana recovery speed, D, 
oh my god. As soon as I turned on the status window, I felt chills. I couldn't believe I only had 10 mana left. When mana was depleted, the mana recovery rate dropped drastically. Of course, I hadn't experienced it yet, but if it was anything like the game, I needed to avoid it at all costs. Black Ice, it's worth the performance. Of course, Black Ice, could not completely replace, Ice Generation, because the mana consumption was equally as high as the superior firepower and strength. Own Skills, Active, 1, Ice Generation, D+, Forward Slash, 5, Black Ice, D+, Black Ice, S level directly corresponded to, Ice Generation, so if the level of 1 went up, the other would go up as well. This meant that there would be no loss in terms of growth, even if they were used alternately. When the proficiency of Black Ice reached S rank, it becomes possible to apply Black Ice to other magic, like Pernicus did with Ice Spear. It was a buff of sorts. In other words, if the Hunter trait was activated every time I dealt with a demon in the future, I could infuse Black Ice on other spells to strengthen them. Normally, I would only be able to use it for Ice Generation. The issue was that using Black Ice on other spells would increase my mana consumption by three times. As a result, it was best to refrain from doing so unless it was time to go all out. I had to check one last thing. Have I not learned Ice Wall yet? Ice Wall was the first magic I had used against Pernicus, and the sensation of using it was still vividly in my mind. I went into the status window, skill tree.details, again, clicked the ice item and tapped the ice wall skill ice wall 4 creates a solid wall of ice type active skill defensive elements ice acquisition conditions lv30 o ice generation grade c dot cold divergence grade c o ice element elemental firepower grade c o ice element Elemental Efficiency, Grade C, oh, I'll learn it soon enough. The only unfulfilled acquisition condition, Ice Generation, Grade C, was only one step away. Sooner or later, I would be able to learn, Ice Wall. I felt motivated. After all, it was fun to grow stronger. First order of business though, was to finish this magic training, since I was currently lacking mana. I feel good, maybe I should exercise. I went to the gym. Then, the students of the night department greeted me as if they had been waiting. After finishing the hellish PT, I trudged back to the dormitory with deep regret.